want to welcome everybody to Iowa Post Game with Kasheen Alexander as we talk about the Iowa women's basketball team and their birth into the Elite Eight. And to thank for the show, we have Iowa Smokehouse, one of our proud sponsors, delivering awesome snacking products each and every day of the year, but especially this time of year during a busy spring sports season, March Madness. And now the Hawkeye women will be playing in April. So uh, suit up, get ready. Stock up with Iowa Smokehouse. Use the code Hawkeyes for 15% off your total order on their meat sticks, jerky, and more. Tasting is believing with Iowa Smokehouse. Again, use the code Hawkeyes for 15% off your total order at iowasmokehouse.com. Get free shipping on any $50 order. I am pleased to be joined by none other than Hawkeye great Kasheen Alexander. Before we get going here, Kasheen, I got one thing to do. All right. I'm going to make this very clear. Oh God! <laughs> Look, I'm just gonna keep doing it too, Kashin. The whole the whole show. Uh, uh, I uh. never see that ever again. I think they should just rename face guarding everything. I just don't want to see it again. Will we get Will we get one of these on Monday? Will we? For will the we sake of my Twitter timeline, I really hope not. Okay, for the sake of your Twitter timeline, I Fair really enough. hope not. Fair enough. Uh, Kashin, thank you for being here. Uh, we've had a, a full day, and many people have had a full day of basketball, traveling, and uh, other things. I know a lot of people have been watching a lot of basketball. Boy, there have been uh, some incredible games across the country, and we're starting this up just about 20 seconds from the conclusion of UConn-Duke. UConn does look like they're going to pull that game out. Very low-scoring affair, but uh, the three-seed Huskies look like they're going to uh, – Push through, and uh, as did Juju Watkins, uh, Angel Reese, and then, of course, Caitlin Clark in the Hawkeyes. So we're going to spend 
the next hour or so talking about what was a very dominant win, Kashin. And I guess what I would say to start my expose, all right, would be simply that I, if I'm surprised by anything, I'm just really surprised at how easy it looked. And I don't know how to feel about that because I didn't expect a 21 point blowout. And really, you could argue it wasn't that close. Um, you know, Iowa had some some uh, reserves in the game late, and this lead actually shrunk a bit. We can get to what happened in the last few minutes later on. But I mean, do you get my line of thinking, Kashin? I mean, how do you digest, besides just being happy, how do you digest what a dominant performance this was today? I don't. I- you know what? I'm not going to say everybody because I'm sure there were some people out there who were a little delusional. So, but I don't think anybody really thought that they would have a 20 point blowout. Like, I, <laughs> nowhere in my mindset was that a, a thing. But within the first. I'm going to be generous. Within the first minute and a half, I knew. Yeah. I was like, okay, this is a different Caitlin. She was so poised, so I mean, she's effective even when she's not poised, but she it was just a different look in her eye. She was going to the rim. She's like, I'm going to use my, you know, my length, my, you know, size to my advantage. I'm not settling for threes. It, I mean, she just had a look in her eyes, and I kind of tweeted about it in the sense of she clearly must have read that Colorado was saying she was emotional and they was trying to get in her head because baby girl came out there like, oh, yeah, who <laughs> watched this? And it was not only calming to her teammates because I feel like they felt like they didn't have to worry about her. And I think that allowed them to play freer as well. Um, But yeah, I knew within probably a minute and a half, I was like, "Uh Oh, (laughs) I think we're going to be all right. Now I didn't think it was going to be 20 points, but I wasn't as nervous after a minute and a half. Totally agree with you. And you obviously can give an objective uh, experience-based take on this, and and I can't. Of course, you played at the highest level here. So, but but I said I, I made the say, at the beginning of the game, and I watched. I did not watch this live, people. So people are wondering why we're getting on the the air late. I wanted first of all, I was traveling today. I wanted to give people an opportunity if we were going to do a late show. Let's give people an opportunity to watch the rest of the games. But uh, I just got done watching the Iowa game back here just a few minutes ago. And that would really that was really my first reaction, first few minutes of watching Kashin is like, okay, game starting, you're hyped, you're nervous. And within the like first five minutes, I'm like, like this this defense does not look like what I thought it was gonna look like. And, and no offense to Iowa. I think what you or what what you said about Caitlin's fair, but at the same time, Maybe we overhyped that Colorado defense a little bit after seeing what West Virginia did to Iowa because Colorado was not able to match the physicality and the aggression that the Mountaineers brought to, to Carver. Is that fair? Yeah, but we said that. We said that last time that they weren't going to be, you know, West or West Virginia. We knew that. It was just a simple fact of I was shocked that Von Ley was so ineffective. Like well. The I'll first try- bucket of the game, I was like, oh, hell. You like <laughs> immediately because she got deep position. It was just an easy bucket. Boom, two points. I was like, oh man, this is gonna be it's gonna be a problem. And then all they just stopped going to her. I was like, I mean, I was happy about it, but at the same time, I wasn't understanding why they stopped going to her. Um how much of that was foul <laughs> trouble though, because she did get a couple early ones, which you hate to do in a big game like this. That's understandable, but if I would have fed her the first three, four, five possessions straight, <laughs> that's just me. I'm, uh-huh. I'm here to make a, a message. I am making a message, and the message is, is we are going to beat you inside. Make Lisa Bluter change up whatever she had planned. But they just kind of kept rolling with it. I don't know. I like I- – I was unaware of that whole thing. I didn't understand that. I mean, I liked our defense, um, you know, mixing it up between man, mixing it up between zone. I think that worked well for us. I think it kept them off balance a little bit. Um, 
we were able to key in on their shooters in our zone, which again, we're playing that weird ass, whatever that is we got going on. It literally lines up like a one, three, one. And then we go into like this whole matchup thing. I like it. Um, so either way, I just didn't understand why they were not taking advantage of that massive size inside. Not complaining. But at the end of the day, our offense was just clicking on all cylinders. We were running the floor. Sid Sid Vicious was awesome. She was. She and, was. and and we, listen, um, I give Caitlin Clark so much credit. She is our RTI Threads player of the game. Yes, she should. And I've been accused of being a Caitlin hater in the past, whatever. But let me just heap a ton of praise on her for something that I really am impressed by. And that's the 15 to 2 assist to turnover ratio. That is, I don't think people realize how impressive that is. The degree of difficulty on a lot of those passes, the tight windows, she's threading the needle on a lot of those bounce passes. She's got the ball in her hands so much. I have a challenge out to our guy, Tony, and Tony's in the queue. Give me a thumbs up, Tony, if you have an answer to my question. Okay, he's got an answer. Uh, before we bring Tony on here, um, and our, our call-in line, as always, is sponsored by Iowa Smokehouse. Kashin, I want you to guess, what do you think the lowest turnover output that Caitlin Clark has had in a – I know she didn't get a triple-double tonight, but she darn well got there almost with the you know four boards short, and, and heck, she plays – the majority of that fourth quarter of the game's in doubt. Maybe she gets those four boards. What do you think the lowest turnover output she's had for any triple-double performance in her career was? The lowest turnover, you said? Yeah. For any any game where she's got – basically five. what I'm looking is anytime she's had 10-plus assists. Five? Five. All right. Let's, let's, we're going to bring Tony in for a second, and then we'll bring you back, Tony. Tony, what's the number? I, I don't have that number. I thought you were just saying if I was here. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. But I, we're going to get rid of Tony. <laughs> Tony, we love you. But Tony, you let me down, Tony. <laughs> All right, he's going to give us the number. I, I'm guessing this is a career low for any game in which – Oh, I think yeah. The, the better question is yes. she had 10-plus assists. She had 15 today. It's not like she just had 10. She had 15. She had zero assists, uh, zero turnovers late in the third quarter. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Her turnovers came, like, late in the game. She's our RTI Threads player of the game. Absolutely incredible performance for uh, Caitlin Clark. And again, we go to the efficiency of Sid the Kid, Sydney a falter, or as I say, Sydney, it's never her a falter. She had uh, six of six in the field, 15 points, five rebounds. The efficiency, she sometimes goes unnoticed because she just makes the makeable plays. She's not making all these crazy step backs like Caitlin does. And she, honestly, she's not. I mean, like today, uh, Sydney didn't make a single three, didn't attempt a single three, but man, she's good around the rim. I think she's their best. I think she's there. Is it fair to say she's their best finisher? Would you go that far with the exception of being Caitlin? Sure. I think I it's a close battle that. with her and Kate, but I think she's a better finisher than can, probably any of the most, players, frankly. Mm -hmm. Um, and just really impressed with Sydney Falter. But Caitlin Clark is our RTI Threads player of the game. 29 points, 15 assists, 6 rebounds, and I think the biggest stat, 2 turnovers. Let's not forget That's our girl Gabby, though. Gabby was out there shooting that thing. She was. 14 points, 4 of 5. Was. In the field. Gabby was out there. Pew, 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 picking them all. She was out there. Just, I, was, I mean, first of all, I know she didn't make it. But did anybody else scream at the TV when she pumped fake and went for the layup? Because I screamed. <laughs> I did. I'm not going to lie. I screamed when she did. I was like, <laughs> which is probably why she missed, right? Because I screamed too loud through the right. TV and she kind of heard it. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I was I was shocked. I'm not going to lie. I was like, oh, yeah. I, I do think she should do that more often, though. Maybe I have next time she'll make it. Something very complimentary to say about Gabby Marshall, because I've also been accused of being a Marshall hater. Um, I've made the comment, you've made the comment, talking about man-to-man -man defense, that uh, she's not the, the best man-on-man -man defender. Mm -hmm. But here's what I've come to the realization of, Kashin, that I think you knew months ago, because you're just a lot savvier and a lot smarter as it relates to basketball, and specifically on-ball defense. I've talked about her effort level, and I stand by those comments. She gives great mm -hmm. effort level on the defensive end, which makes her probably Iowa's best perimeter defender. Yep. But let me go a step further from that. She is not quick laterally, all right? Mm -mm. 
I think she's below average in, you know, I, I think of a, of a good perimeter defender, especially when you're guarding someone who can break you down. I think of somebody who can stay in front of the ball handler, right? Mm -hmm. Stay in between them and the basket. Mm -hmm. Gabby doesn't do a great job of that oftentimes. Mm -hmm. But let me say this. In addition to effort, she is gifted, I think, in a couple different facets. One being her hands. She's got really good hands, good anticipation. She's got a knack for getting steals. We've seen she's got a knack, even though she's undersized, of contesting shots and timing. So I do think she's a unique player in that because she's not naturally gifted as it relates to lateral quickness. And I think that's why I've been a little hard on her at times, because that's what I think of when I think of a really good perimeter defender. But there's multiple ways to skin a cat, right? I mean, she's not going to get she's not going to be all big, yeah. 10, all all defensive Big Ten, but she uh, boy, she's effective at times. And Jalen Sherrod was pretty quiet. And I'm not saying that was. Due to Gabby, yeah, can't shoot though, so that's kind of a hard thing. Like she's not a knockdown shooter, so Gabby was able to give her a cushion, which helped with the quickness. Absolutely. Um, but I mean, you want to know who my take is for our best perimeter defender? Sydney. You're damn right. <laughs> yeah, she was Absolutely. Sydney kid is always keeping people in front. Absolutely. And and yeah, maybe I mean, have, maybe doesn't have the reaction or the the uh the hand skills yes so gabby does right he's not gonna get you steals like gabby is but right. what sid is gonna do is keep those people in front of her there's not many times where kid where she, sid gets like blown by where i'm like I, that never happens it's right. two things that are gonna happen one she's gonna beat you to the spot and cut you off or two she may or may not get a body blocking foul like it's yeah. one or the other because she is going to she is going to get there or she's close to getting there, where sometimes Gabby just gets blown by and she ain't nowhere in the vicinity to even get a blocking foul. So, I mean, that's what I've started to notice about Sid is that next year she's probably going to be guarding the perimeter's best players, unless one of our freshmen come in and they're like lockdown defenders. And since this goes right back to what we've said in the, in the past, uh, I'll repeat it. Gabby Marshall, good defender, Sydney Fulcher, good defender. Um, neither one of them are elite, but they're both very good, especially at what they do. And that makes them good defenders in general and capable in games like this. I think Caitlin Clark's got some good skill on that end. I don't know that she always showcases it. I think she's, we can talk about what her future at the NBA or WNBA level is a different day as it relates to, to defense. Cause I'd be curious to get your take on that. But uh, anyways, I know people want to talk about this one. The Hawkeyes defeating Colorado 89-68 and earning a rematch with LSU in the Elite Eight. Let's go back to our Iowa Smokehouse call in line. I think Tony's got an answer for us. Tony. It ties. There was another time she had two turnovers. How oh. many assists did she have that day? Uh, the day that she had two turnovers you're talking about? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. One I guarantee seven. you she didn't have 15 assists. I'm going to guess no if I remember looking at it right, but I can tell you here very quick. It's 12-2-21. Uh, it's against Michigan State, so it's probably one of her first ones. Yeah, 12-5-21. You got like eight screens you're looking at back and forth there, Tony? I do, but it's it's not a huge deal. Okay, 12-5-21. Uh, she had assists 12. 12, okay. So she had, uh, I don't this know, points is hard, the but... most impressive assist to turnover ratio in a single game she's had in her career. Yeah, right? 12 and it'd be 12 and 12 and two. Yeah, would be the assist. But yes, uh, she had 14 and two against Wisconsin in oh. 21. That's, that's not really good. That's, that's really good. That's yeah, really but it's good. also against Wisconsin. That don't count. Okay, fair enough. Well, it's not tournament play. There's lots of reasons. No, but their their the defense is atrocious. So I yeah, I mean any I'm yeah. not saying anybody, but you know what I mean. It's a lot easier to do that against Wisconsin than it is. This is a good defense that they beat today. Yes. Yes. It, it may not be West Virginia good on that end, but no. it's a more complete team. Than uh, she had she actually may have had a better one. It was uh, March 5th, 2023 in the conference tournament. So that would have been last year's finals. Uh, 17 assists and two turnovers against Ohio State. <laughs> that's well, some tough stuff right there, that, That's 17-2 in the Big Ten championship game. All right. And that's their yep. one. 
what was that? Their uh, third game in three days. Yeah, I, I see you, Caitlin. I see <laughs> so, you. Yeah, that's how uh, many points you have to go with that. And that seventeen and two. Let's see here. Where's she had twenty nine tonight. Where's the total points here? Oh, 30. <laughs> she had 30, 10, and seventeen. Yeah, that's over with. Second best game. I mean, whatever. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty. Uh, yeah, but you could say if we're trying to like look into the future that she performs best when the lights are on the brightest. And, and let me just say because this. Because that was the finals of the conference. And, and I mean, we all know that, but I'm just, but go ahead. Colorado is a better defensive team than Ohio State. Colorado is a yeah. better defensive team this year than than Ohio State was last year. Uh, Tony, you have anything for Kashin? Uh Yes, I just have two questions. Um, just two? Oh, over here. Yeah, just two. Uh, Kashin, we need you to make a, uh, like a saying so Corey can make a shirt for women's basketball. Like he has the... Uh, you know what's a, the that's football, Corey, or, or no? What's the upside? What's the upside? So we need to we need to get a what's the upside saying from Kashin. You want to help me with my so merch? What money? exactly is what's the upside? How about we start with that? <laughs> <laughs> she followed. Listen, if she followed Iowa football like we all do, Tony, she'd know exactly what that means. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll I'm just more have of a check in, check out kind of. Well, I am. Thing. I am too as a football fan. I don't follow it nearly as much as Corey thinks I do. But, but Tony more, still knows what that means. Well, pretty much, I think the gist of it is that um, it was in replacing the quarterback, correct? And like, what's yeah, the upside? In, that our friend Brian Ferentz made. I guess. I guess, I guess for you, here, here's here's a correlation. I'd say for you, it'd be well. What's the upside with replacing Gabby Marshall in the starting lineup when we're fully healthy? Is that a correlation? We're not for talking it? about that tonight. <laughs> I'm just trying to make it so she understands uh, the what's the upside thing, Corey. I'm you're trying sorry. to get me ripped. I am not trying to do that at all. I would not do that. Well, mine, yeah, no. I'll work <laughs> on that. Okay. Uh, this The second question is more lighthearted. Um, you always see teams get fired up and they, you know, give the um, camera shot like uh, tonight, uh, Coach Tanaya was the one. It seemed like that was firing them up today. Do uh, teams usually have like a player or two or a coach or two that's designated to that? And how is that des decided or is it just? It's not decided. It's just whoever want to do it. And then it becomes almost like a routine. Of, kind of like a superstition. Yeah. It, that's what happens. It's like whoever it is for the year just does it for the rest of the year. Um so, yeah, it's not really decided. It just kind of happens, I guess. Hey, James in the private chat just said that we should we should have a Kashin shirt that says, I am Michael Jordan. <laughs> or not. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got a lot of <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead, Johnny. So, that's, hey, um, you need Corey to send you some Iowa Smokehouse if you've never had it. Oh, that was, upset. That was horrible branding. I will do that. Yeah, it was like way upside down, but I'm it's sorry, fine. The, the thought was there. The thought, the thought was there, Tony. Yeah. Well, you mm -hmm. know those cameras. You know, you like point this way, and you really mean this. Yeah. Way and stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, are you going to be able to uh, be with us Monday? I'm guessing. Not what time is that game? Uh, seven. Your time. Yep. And I believe. Let me double check. I had to pull that. I think it's ESPN regular. Oh, yes. yay. It's ESPN. Yep. That's all I got. I, I missed yes, your Twitter message. Be, I'm sorry. My guess is it will be the highest ratings ESPN has had on a women's basketball game. That's what I'm going with. Yeah. And not even close is my guess. Mm -hmm. Um, I did not get a chance. And I'll ask, did you either of you get a chance to read the uh, Washington Post article? I have not yet. Okay. I'm not spending my time on it. Um, so you ain't gonna read that, Kashin? No, it's I think it's, yeah. All right. Listen, even if it has some of the most damaging things on there, I am not wasting my time on Kim Loki. I'm not. Y'all can I give me the cliff say, notes. Okay. It'll be on Twitter. Tony, I'm a, well, you got anything else for me, Tony? No, that's a lot. Right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your 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 insight as always. All right, I got I got to ask you about this. So we haven't talked since the whole Kim Mulkey Washington Post thing went down what what is your take on that because i know you have respect for kim Mulkey okay. as a coach. what's your take on it on like the article or what? well the whole situation so the way that kim Mulkey addressed I haven't read media, the article. 
The okay, only I know thing I know on, about, huh? The way that Kim Mulkey, let's just start with that. The way Kim Mulkey addressed the media ahead of the article's publishing. I mean, am I surprised that she acted like that? No, because I obviously I wouldn't go that far because I'm not as hot blooded as Kim Mulkey is. But at the same time, if I was getting wind of someone putting out false information or so I thought, I could see how she would be upset or pissed off about it. Now, the funny part about it is what I'm hearing is that there's nothing bad in it. <laughs> Really, like, as far as what, I guess, was supposed to be out there. So now I'm curious as to, did they get scared off? Or <laughs> what happened? Because this is supposed to be this big thing, and it's not. Yeah. So <laughs> what happened? But at the same time, I really don't care. I know I've brought this up in the past, but... Is it fair for me to look at that situation and say, yes, I understand that that's a big, big deal. If the Washington Post was planning on publishing an article that was a quote unquote hit piece on Kim Mulkey. But when you talk to the media about how you don't want to have distractions for your players and you feel like the media is trying to gang up on you and cause distractions and undermine your team and your race for a championship, your hunt for a championship aren't you kind of contradicting yourself by going on a five minute rant about yourself and something that, that you want to like, I know she made, she kind of went full circle about how she's, she loves this team. She's going to rally behind this team, but was that the right way to address it in your opinion, regardless of what the article was going to state? I mean, in this day and age, you was gonna, it was going to be a distraction regardless. It was already a distraction because it was all over Twitter. <laughs> about this hit piece and people wondering what it is and people talking about Kim Mulkey and speculating. and It was already a distraction to begin with. So I don't think that if whoever the, or the person was didn't say like, oh, I'm giving you till this day, I don't think she would have brought it up. I think she would have been quiet. But since they gave her a deadline and they said, you know, whatever, then she was like, okay, then I need to speak, you know, whatever my piece is. Do I think that she probably should have went on a five minute rant? No, keep it simple. You know what I mean? Like, but it's also Kim Mulkey we're talking about. Nothing is ever simple. So, yeah, that's my take. And let's just be clear Kim Mulkey admitted in that rant that the Washington Post writer had tried to get in touch with her many times over the course of two years. So, mm -hmm. you know, you're kind of. Uh, defeating your own argument by bringing up how they reached out to you right before this game, if they've been reaching out to you for two years and you've failed to well, respond. I mean, uh, in her, in her semi defense, like why now? Like it hasn't been reaching been out to me for two years. Why the hell are you trying to put it out right now? Why not just wait till the season's over? Like that oh. doesn't make sense. You want to put it out right now, right when we're getting into the, Think of things in, in NCAA and we need to be focused. You want to do it now? Like, you could have done that at any point. But okay. you want to do it now? That sounds real suspect to me. But either way, like I said, he could have waited. Or whoever it was could have waited until afterwards. But he chose not to. So, I mean, that's his right by all means. But at the same time, like, now? Right when we about to? Well, what does the Washington Post, how does the Washington Post owe anything to Kim Mulkey not to publish it right now? If she's I'm failed. not saying that, but you can't, you cannot tell me that we've been talking about this for two years and you right now is when you want to do that. No, nah. y'all doing that on purpose because you, you being petty. It's like, come on, petty. you being petty. So don't be mad when I respond in the same petty way. Like it just is what it is. If you want to do that, then I'm going to do it. It's not, it's a, it's a two way front here. She don't owe them nothing and they don't owe her nothing. So that's how I went. I mean, I don't really pay much attention to Kim Mulkey in that sense. Her antics are her antics, and I leave it as that. Um, yeah. This may be an unpopular opinion, Kashin, but the reason I bring it up is to me, if and if they're fair, and if again, if they're fair questions, I don't know if they were fair questions or not. But if the media is reaching out to you for two years and you're just ignoring a particular reporter, then I think you deserve whatever's coming to you, frankly.
Like, I think that's, yeah, I mean, I, that asking, makes sense. You're, you're, you're asking for problems. If yeah, you're going to, I mean, that makes sense. Treat the media. I mean, she has way. her reasons for whatever, sure, whatever reason she didn't want to reach out to. I know she had said in that long rant that they were reaching out to people on a false pretense. That could have been it too. Yeah. Yeah. We don't so, know. I don't know. But either way it goes, it's really irrelevant. I didn't even care what they posted or whatever they did. Cause at the end of the day, they can say whatever they want to say. All right. She's let's, not go back, let's go back to our Iowa smokehouse call online. Thank you for calling Iowa post game with Kashin Alexander. Who's on the line. Well, yes, this is uh Jacob. How are you doing? Good, Jacob. How are you? Not too bad. Uh, just to start off, I have to provide an update for the Snuggie. Oh, I asked okay. my uh, daughter for the Snuggie, what she thought of your Snuggie Kashin. And there was a little drama because it wasn't pink. Uh, I know. And, I, it, and that's fine, you know. But she said she did like it because she said it looked soft. That is that's a hundred percent correct. It is the softest thing, anyways. Okay. And I'm gonna keep wearing it as long as we keep winning. Okay. And then uh I need pink though. Uh, for, She's right. I need to go get me a pink one. I'm gonna look on Amazon. Thank tell your daughter thank you for that. And we uh watched um uh some of your highlights on YouTube, and a question she did have for you is why are your shorts so long? Oh, and, tell me about it. And I said, "Do you mean?" <laughs> I said, "Do you mean baggy?" Because she played. And she goes, "Well, they just ago. go long. She They're played, longer than Caitlyn's." But she so played long. twelve years ago. That's, that's not a hard question to answer. Just she a different time. Everybody, do you, do you ever? Hey, do you ever watch John Licklider play? They're like down in his calves. <laughs> under his ankles. Looks like he was wearing diapers. Yeah. yeah. Apparently. Well, you could tell your daughter. Apparently, that was just the uniforms back then. Unfortunately, we were stuck yeah. in that era of really long shorts. Um, not my finest hour, but I didn't have a choice. But so. Kashin, I'm telling you, I went. To, I, I'm younger than you are, not by a ton, but in like I remember in high school, people. It was weird to wear shorts above your knees. Yeah, it was not a thing. It was. Like yes. that's how it was, but I'm telling you, uh, caller, that's that's how it was ten years ago. Ten, well, f- more than that. 15 Unfortunately. Years ago. Yeah. Well, yeah. But what about middle school, though? Middle school, they were up there. They were high up there. They were high. No, nah. we were with the. Uh, you know, when I was playing, I was, everything was baggy. Yeah, I mean, there was a stretch of time. No, 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 not middle that. school. We just had a bag, and the coach said, "Whatever you can find is what you wear." And I'm like, all right, okay. Well, <laughs> it was a small school in Iowa. It is what it is. Yeah, we went. Okay, through, I respect that. I respect that. We went through a couple different eras of short, long, short. I wish we could just have balance. Like, can't we just wear? We don't need these super short, you know, speedos on the tennis court, but or on the basketball court. Yeah, and then for you, Corey, you also the your. Luca, as the kids say now, you're you're a fanboy of his. Yeah, they. By the way, they. they uh, by the way, real quick, they beat the Kings again last night. They've won ten of eleven. Okay, so went over with her about who are the top three players in basketball because she watches basketball with me, mm-hmm. and he's not in the top five. We've oh. got, and this Sorry. is her list, by the way. Sorry, your daughter. She's got, your daughter needs to watch this nope. show more, I guess. Well, she she's got Giannis. Okay. Joker. Okay. Tatum. And then this is where it gets interesting. Anthony Edwards. And I said, why Anthony Edwards? I can rock with that one. And she said, because he's cute. Oh my gosh. I mean, her her logic may not have been sound as far as that's concerned. However, yep, I he is 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 he is gaining on me, and I I I, I can he, understand. Where, but real I, quick, I, let me just say this real quick. I'll say one thing, Kashin. I know this is an Iowa show, but 
you you can't with a straight face even argue that Anthony Edwards is above Luka Doncic right now. As much as you don't like, I Luka can. Doncic, you oh, can't. Mind. Not not. I can. Okay. Well, not. Here's with a how I, face. here's how I'll do it. Okay. Here's how I'll say it. If a game is on the line, could either Anthony Edwards or Luca make that shot? Yes. Do they have the confidence to make that shot and take a shot? Yes. Okay. <laughs> if the game is on the line to make a defensive play, who's going to make that play and who's not even going to try? I think that's a little bit unfair, but. Oh, Luca fan. play no defense. Uh, you watch the playoffs? Did you watch him two years ago in the Western Conference Finals? We'll, we'll see here in a few weeks. By the oh, way, yeah. How'd that game seven work out? We're, what game seven? They won game seven. What are you talking about? <laughs> All right. Well, I'm done with Luca talk. Well, they won game seven by 40 against the Suns. Anyways, go, go on. You got anything else going? <laughs> yeah. But Anthony Edwards is uh, legitimately, he is. Uh, rising up just because of when you watch him play, it just looks, he looks slightly different. He's, he's a beast, but okay. um, a few things. Yes. And just to clarify one last time, Luca, not in the top five, but thank you. Um, thank you. For could it, you're welcome. Um, real quick, Kashin, what I got a few questions about the game and then a question about the LSU game coming up is now this is like the third game in a row and I can't remember if I asked this question before what is the issue with Iowa's out of bound defense we give up two baskets it seems like a game now of easy baskets underneath the basket when the other team is inbounding I don't like our, our I don't know what <laughs> excuse my French I don't know what the hell defense we're running their back is like they're facing the ball. Like, I don't know what that is. I I don't know what that is. I feel like it's got to be uncomfortable as a player to be facing the ball. Like, you can't see yeah. no cutters. You can't see nothing. I don't like it. I am not a fan. I hate it. I think they should get rid of it and never burn it. Don't ever use it again. But uh, the chances of that happening are slim. I can't tell you what that is or why they're doing it. I don't see the benefit in it. I never have. Well, Morrow and uh, Williams, them two crashing down in there, they could, the way we play defense, they could probably get eight points themselves off of inbounds plays. Possibly. Um, but um, as far as uh, – who is going to guard Caitlin for LSU? I was sitting here thinking about this. Is recent uh, moral might, but I doubt it because Caitlin will be able to get around her. Williams for LSU, uh, an unbelievable bucket. I mean, she can score whenever she wants within the elbow and in. She's unbelievable as a freshman, but she's not playing no defense. Um, and then you have Van Lith. Van Lith ain't, ain't going to get in front of anybody. And then that leaves Johnson. Now, are they going to put Johnson on Caitlin? Because during the game, they said the LSU game, the LSU has only ran zone like only like 15 plays throughout the full year. Like they don't they're run. Gonna put, they're going to put Fajay on her. And then the main person on there is going to be Polo. That's who's going to be really guarding her. Well, that's the thing I was thinking about is, can you ever switch Johnson on Caitlin? Because if you do, um, that's risking Johnson getting worn out because she already is going to have to score. Now you're going to have her but get How much does Caitlin really run? Smaller. Caitlin's not running. Like That's the thing. Caitlin isn't like you're guarding a Steph Curry. Caitlin just has the ball in her hands. It'd be different if she was oh, running off screens and doing all this other stuff. She doesn't do that. So, like, the idea of getting yeah. tired with Caitlin is non-existent because she's not running around. So, for me, I so think... What I mean, though, is, is if 
because as a game like this, when she's focusing, which I'm glad she did, on driving to the basket and getting closer to the basket of those bumps um, over time, you know, that maybe could draw a foul, foul or two. Um, it, it, I don't know. I just don't know why they would put Johnson on Caitlin. And that's my whole question is, who are they going to put on Caitlin, really, that is I either going you. to be able to... Uh, <laughs> that's who they're going to put on oh. her. Yes. She's their best defensive player. Yeah, I don't know about that. She is their best defensive player. She's taken worker. probably 30 or 40 charges this just this year. Trust me, she's going to pick up a charge on Caitlin. It's guaranteed. It's going to happen. Because she, she is that. She so, might. I mean, at the end that of the day... Be after yeah, the not, five layups Caitlin made, though. Yeah, but again, you got to remember, Caitlin scored rounder. 40 points last year. We still lost. So it's really irrelevant yeah. what Caitlin does because she scored 40 and we lost. So it's everybody else. If everybody else can be effective, then I'm I'm good with yeah. that. But Caitlin, I, I have a – what's the word? As far as Caitlin's scoring is concerned, I'm more so like Caitlin's going to get hers one way or the other. Whether she's going to yeah. jack up threes, drive to the basket, or live at the free throw line, she's going to get hers one way or the other. It's if she is involving her teammates or not. That's what I care about the most. Yeah. But Poa is going to be her primary defender. That that That's definitely yeah. going to happen. Because Flage hey, is in. Is going to come off the bench? No. So to start the game, my guess is they're going to start Flage on her. But Poa is going to be a quick substitution. That's That's how she is all the time. Now, who she comes in for, that depends. And at the end of the day, that's who they're going to have on her for the majority of the game because that's their best defensive player. They'll rotate other people on her, of course, mm-hmm. but she, just like every other team does, but she's going to be the primary uh, defender on her. But, again, if we can't box them out, none of this matters. <laughs> like, well, I agree with you on that, but my what I was really trying to – dig deep down in there is if any player poa johnson any player gets in any bit of foul trouble for lsu that's a huge deal for lsu yeah, same for us because they just don't have a bench same for us and if caitlin comes if caitlin comes in and says i need to be aggressive to draw some fouls which is fine that's not a bad strategy I was thinking about what's their next rotation in foul trouble. And I was thinking if we can get into that spot to where they're going to have to find a different rotation because of foul trouble, then uh, we can maybe uh, uh, um, have a little better matchup on our end. Um, because I mean, if we don't yeah, get in foul trouble, think, we're going to get out rebounded by like 30. Thanks, well, yeah, that's, that's every game. Yeah, I mean, make some good points. Um, but there is going to be a rotation, like you said, they're, they're going to rotate players on Caitlin. That's just the name. Anybody, everybody does it. Yeah, um, I mean, everybody has their main defender who they want to take the most Caitlin possessions, but they're going to have to rotate everybody. You can't just ro- you can't just have one person on. Caitlin the entire night. That's just not going to happen. But at the end of the day, if we do not rebound, none of that matters. We can play a fantastic half-court defense, and if we do not rebound, it does not matter. (laughs) Because they're just going to keep getting easy buckets or getting us into foul trouble, and then we are the ones screwed. So if we do not rebound, it don't matter about nothing else. All right, let's go back to our Iowa Smokehouse call-in line. we got James here with us. James, welcome. First off, idea for the shirt, you just put parentheses. I am Michael Jordan, and then Andre put Kashina Alexander. I like it. That's... Remember, she didn't say I am She didn't say I am Michael Jordan. She said I'm like Michael Jordan. Then just put that on there. Whatever she said, yeah, just we put, put that, that on there. there. Can we just say mindset? Because that's <laughs> mindset, what I was talking okay. about, you guys. Like, uh, not mindset. like play. But you know what? Go ahead, James. What you got? No, I'm just joking. But uh, first off, it was a, like you said, it wasn't. I didn't expect a 20 point win, a 21 point win, right? I thought it'd be another same scrappy game. But I also felt like they didn't play as much man as I thought they would, Colorado. So I feel like maybe that's the reason why it was so 
they kind of were giving us open shots. Like, obviously, Gabby didn't hit a lot of threes the last couple of games, so maybe they're like, okay, we'll give it to her. And she hits them, she hits them. But it seemed like they weren't like guarding the three as well as some other teams yeah. do against us. And to go along, this comment in the chat, because she kind of goes along with James's comment. I mean, I don't know that this is necessarily identifying Colorado's defense versus their offense, but what's your sign in the chat? It says the feel from Colorado was just odd. They seem disjointed or something. How, like, is it just a matter of Iowa jumped on them early, Caitlin was hitting her spots, or what would you, uh, were you surprised at the, especially a team coming off a win against Kansas State? Yes, I'm with her in the sense of they just seemed very lackadaisical. I was expecting, if you're going to talk your ish on social media and to these reporters and this, that, and the third, we're going to get in her head, we're going to be this, we're going to be that, and then you come out flat. I was like, no way. You did not just talk up all of this stuff, get Caitlin all pissed off, and then come out like that. No way. It's not even possible. There was not even any, like, how were you planning on getting in her head? Because I didn't see not even one attempt. I didn't see, like, what happened? I, again, I am not complaining. Thank you very much for giving us an easy game. I appreciate it for our leg's sake. However, what happened? <laughs> I don't know. I was very. If you, well, yeah, I'm saying if, you, if you watch a lot of the threes, Gabby was like wide, wide open. Like, there was like nobody within. And I'm like, you're just not even going to try to guard her. Like, I respect. I don't know. Maybe they got. It just, it just seemed weird just, to me. But. Can I say this from a an amateur standpoint, Kashin? When I heard uh, What's Her Face, uh, one of the, the two commentators for the ABC crew, made the comment early that Colorado's game plan going into this game was to play Colorado defense. They're not doing anything different on Caitlin Clark. That for, First of all, that was like, ooh, like if I'm a Colorado fan, I don't like hearing that. Because to me, Caitlin Clark, you have to do something different on Caitlin Clark. Like there are certain players that you, if you just say, I'm going to match up with you, they going to burn you. And Here's from my vantage point what happened, Kashin. And, and as good as Jalen Sherrod is in the man to man, Caitlin Clark consistently got penetration. She got in the lane and she was sharp when she got down there. She was either dumping it off to Hannah, dumping it off to Addison, kicking it out to Kate, kicking it out to Gabby, kicking it out to Sydney. And it was just everything was so decisive with what Caitlin was doing offensively. She wasn't Nick making threes. I mean, she did not shoot well from three. Tonight on the night, she was three of 11 from three. And yet, again, we talked about the assist to turnover ratio. Isn't that when they're most deadly, when she's able to get inside the lane whenever she wants, as opposed to games against West Virginia, where double team her out on the perimeter and make her dump it off out there, Right. Because too much too much bad can happen defensively if you're Colorado when you're letting her get into the lane. Yeah. I mean, I think I, the commentators as well as the halftime ladies kind of said it best. She was l literally creating <laughs> our offense. Like she was forcing rotations the way she wanted them to go and then kicking out to whoever was open. She was forcing it. Like she knew the play two times ahead of the play and you could see it like, Oh, here comes the part. And it was like automatic. You knew where she was going to go. You weren't surprised by her passes yeah, exactly. in the sense of, I know she was going to go there. I could see her lining up uh, Sydney and falter on that one and one there was, she kind of, she stayed down a little bit. I could see her. She was already eyes looking. And then she took one step and it was like, shoo, she already knew what was happening and she knew it was going to happen that way. And I think that's where Caitlin is the most dangerous because not only do you have to worry about everybody else now, and that allows her the freedom after the fact. Before I get to the LSU game, one more thing I want to say about, this game is I'm surprised Corey didn't come on here first and be like, why did they put Caleb Clark back in the fourth quarter? Cause you know, that's one thing he, me and him kind of always harp about. I was surprised it wasn't the first thing out your mouth. Corey it was like, why did they put her back in when they were up 23? That's okay. I handled it for him. I tweeted it yeah. during the game. Yeah, I, okay. <laughs> I wasn't on Twitter during the game. Kashin. So 
let's address it because James brought it up. Not me for the record, but what are you doing? You're up 20. You're up 20. You were out at like four minutes. And I was like, yeah, thank you. And then as soon as I tweeted it, she was back in the game. I was like, how the hell is she back in the game? Why is she in the game? Yeah. Why why was she in the game? Do you have an, I don't know. See, now you sound times in the past. I don't know it how is to what explain. it is at this point. We yeah, I know. I, James, just, what's your LSU uh, question? Rebounding is my question. Do we obviously we know Anissa Morrow and Hannah will probably guard them more as well as she can, right? But then it's like, what do you do for Reese? Because you have nobody really to check out Reese or try to rebound with Reese or box out with Reese. That's the kind of issue I have. It's like you can only box out one, not the other one. And it kind of it's gonna be difficult, I feel like that way for not making shots. Just we gonna have to forward. gain rebound. <clears throat> That's what I used to call it. You gonna have to gain rebound. Every last one of y'all gotta be in there. Not you cannot leave it up to Hannah and Kate or even um Sydney. You can't leave it up to them. <clears throat> Gap, you're gonna have to get your little behind up in there and rebound. Uh Caitlin, you're gonna have to rebound. She does a pretty good job of it. But Caitlin, you're gonna have to rebound. Everybody gonna have to rebound. It is not just gonna be a, a post situation. We're gonna all have to get in there and rebound because Flage is a very good rebounder and she's a guard. So we're going to have to figure it out. Everybody's going to have to rebound. If there's anything we pay attention to on the scout, is that. How do you yeah. account for the athleticism <laughs> difference? I mean, there's obviously a, a stark difference with the level of athlete at LSU and the level of athlete at Iowa. And, and they've overcome that a number of times. But I think there, there seems to be a wider margin in this matchup. One word. Can you guess? It starts with a D. Discipline. Okay. That's it. Discipline. You have got to be disciplined every possession. As soon as that shot goes up, you've got to hit, turn, and box. Yeah. You cannot miss one. Because when you miss, she's going to still be rebounding because that's what she does. And both of them do. So we have to be disciplined every possession. Every possession. Hannah was very disciplined today. She didn't let that girl get one offensive rebound. Good for her. She's going to have to do that next tomorrow or Monday. She's going to have to do that then. But now Kate's going to have to do that. And she is going to have a battle on her hands. Kate is good. She better get a good night's sleep. I wasn't real happy. And I say I wasn't real happy she was in the game in the last three minutes either, frankly, because to me. But anyways, uh, James, uh, thank you for the call, sir. I got to move on, but uh, always enjoy your calls, sir. I've been enjoying that. And hopefully we can get the big win on. uh... On set or Monday, and Monday. I let them get the momentum, you know. And absolutely, amen, sir. Appreciate it. All right, um, we've got Tyler on our Iowa Smokehouse call in line. Before we get to Tyler, as always, want to thank our sponsors, RTI Threads, our RTI Threads player of the game today, Caitlin Clark, 29 big ones, 15 assists, just two turnovers. She was sharp. Everything exception being three point shots, but boy, her ability to see the floor just about any angle has uh, just, again, you see the difference, even in a game where she doesn't shoot particularly well, they win by 20 plus. And uh, it's going to, I just, after watching this game, Kashina, I continue to go back to, it's going to take a certain type of team to beat Iowa. And I think we've always known that. And that was what we were so frustrated with on Selection Sunday was it seemed like the committee put several teams that were those types of teams in Iowa's draw. But they've gotten by Colorado, Kansas State. They didn't have to play Kansas State, but that was a bad matchup potentially. West mm-hmm. Virginia. And now, of course, you get another bad one. They don't got to play uh, UCLA. They'll play LSU. And then, you know, we'll see. I think they match up pretty well with USC, to be quite frank. I, I don't. I mean, they're some big. They're big. I'm not, I'm not, I think talent wise, we're there, but have you looked at their guards except for the little one? But they're, they're not like a- six foot across the board. Like they're huge. I looked at them today. I'm like, my goodness. But I'm still comfortable because they don't have like a like a huge post presence. Does that make sense? Like they don't have a massive post presence. Although they're all big guards, quote unquote, they're not like sit you in the paint kind of scenario. So I, I feel better about that than I do LSU. Maybe I'm seeing things through blinders, but I don't see the level of physicality with USC that I see with South Carolina, that I see with well, LSU. I, 
um, and, and certainly that I see with with West Virginia. Um, so again, Caitlin Clark, 29 points, RTI Threads player of the game. Be sure to check out RTI Threads, their merchandise, whether it be their Iowa Baseball Swarm merch, which is at iowabaseballswarm.com, or any of their football and player NIL apparel. Check it out, rtithreads.com, and again, iowabaseballswarm.com. Let's go back to our Iowa Smokehouse call in line. we got Tyler on the line with us. Tyler, welcome. Well, hey, guys. How are you doing tonight? Thanks for taking my call, if that's what you want to call this. Uh, I had a question regarding, I have a few of them, but what were your thoughts on the LSU game overall? And what I mean by that is you've, um, especially Kashin has said things in the past, like they tend to lapse into selfish basketball. Uh, They tend to take two types of shots. It's either a hard grind or they do flash plays. Um, there was another thing that somebody was observing on Twitter earlier that they looked kind of tired. And I kind of saw that is, are those the kind of things that you saw in the game when you were watching? Yeah. So like LSU is like a grinded out kind of, team. Yeah. they don't beat people by 20, 30, 40. They, that's just not the kind of team they are. And one, because kind of like you said, they make everything difficult. Like everything has to be difficult for them. It has to be the flash. It has to be all of these things. The thing that saves them is their offensive rebounding ability. Yeah. They're getting twice as many shot opportunities as the other team. So they're able to get easy buckets if it's a putback, or they get to start their offense over again and probably hit, you know, a contested shot or whatever the case is. I mean, you saw Flage, she got an offensive rebound, backed out mm-hmm. to a three point line and shot a contested three. Huh? Like now it went in, but it's still the simple fact of that's probably not the greatest shot option, but again, that's who they are. Um, so for me, I think, like I said, if we rebound, we have a very good chance at that. The other thing for me is run, 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 run. Like if we run like as far as our guards, I'm not even talking about Hannah. I'm talking about our guards Mm -hmm. and obviously Hannah, she looked slow today (laughs) i don't know what was going on with her but she did not she didn't have the same speed i felt like she should have been beating von lay up the floor way more than she was Mm -hmm. do you feel like do you feel like sometimes when she's in a matchup and she is undersized and it's clear she's undersized that that affects her psyche i I wondered about that i'm not gonna lie that is something i did wonder today Um, she's tensing up a little bit yeah like she just seems scared like almost in the sense of like, and I know she's not. It just seemed like she, she hadn't been there before. I'm like, mm-hmm. I, you you played against better post players. You played against, you know, what what what, what am I seeing here? Use mm-hmm. your quickness. If you try to bully the girl and be strength for strength, pound for pound, you're gonna lose every mm-hmm. time. So use your quickness. Get around her. Beat her to the spot. That kind of stuff. But um, I mean, yeah, we just gotta run, man. And I, 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 they do look tired. They don't seem very in shape to me. No, with rebounding, the, the, uh, what you were talking about there, I was concerned in the Iowa game uh, watching because I did not see a lot of boxing out. Uh, mm-hmm. And I don't know what happened there because I haven't, I've seen it before throughout the season, but not to that level. And as I was watching, I'm like, if we get through this and we get to LSU, they're going to make us pay very dearly for not doing that. So yeah, they, have, they their- have like 11 O boards or something like that. <laughs> crazy i don't have the stats in front of me but it's it seemed that way it, yeah because i remember them saying that in the in the uh the announcers and i was like lord jesus we can't do that on monday mm-hmm. um, but i it's going to be a different focus as far as what we're focusing on i'm pretty sure that the boxing out was not a focus mm-hmm. for this game it definitely will definitely will be in the next game is there anything that, uh, if you were scouting LSU uh, for Coach Bluter, is there anything that you haven't brought up uh, yet on the show, or you know, even talking to me, that you would say that is a must in preparation for LSU on Monday? Zone. Mm-hmm. That's, so, like, if there was anything I would put my two cents in, is our zone. If we have not decided, talked about all of those things, I would. I know Bluter, so I'm. I'm. I'm very confident in that mm-hmm. as far as something that she hasn't thought about who 
whoever Angel Reese is guarding, put her in as many ball screens as you can. Okay. Because she does not move well laterally, if anybody's ever noticed. Whenever she is moving laterally and she has to, um, what's the word? She has to recover is when she gets herself in foul troubles. And so we can get her in as many. Go ahead. I was going to say, she doesn't seem to be the most, I I guess I've never thought about the lateral quickness, but she Mm -hmm. doesn't seem to be the most nimble post in general. No, no, not at all. You're right. I, that, that is true. No, that's always, that's, she is, whenever she has to move and if you just have her standing there, she's going to swatch your shot. Like, Mm -hmm. of course, but if you have her moving, she is going to foul you. It's almost 90% chance she's going to foul you. And I would much rather see her on the bench if I'm going to be honest. So um, that would be my number one thing is get her in as many ball screens or as many, as much action as you can. Um, because my guess is Angel is going to be on Hannah and Anissa Morrow is going to be on Caitlin. How do you, because in in the last few weeks that people have noticed this and you guys have too, probably, uh, Flaugé has really gone next level and she hasn't looked back. And so that's the big question because she took the team on her back uh, especially towards the end of the UCLA game, how do you stop her? Or what would you recommend to try to stop her anyway? Put sit on her. <laughs> I, l- here's the funny part about Flage. She is not quick laterally. Like, but she's shifty, which is mm-hmm. why she's able to get past people. But like, if you were to just put her on the baseline and <laughs> said run, she's not coming in first. Right. But, her feet are huge. That's another mm. reason why she's not as fast. If you look at her feet, they're massive. It's like it's like this when she's like running. I love Flage. I love her game. Mm-hmm. I love who she is, what she's about. I'm 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 a big fan of Flage. So yeah, I'm I've happy to see her too. She, yeah, like I'm happy to see that she's kind of taking this next next step in her sophomore season. But I think putting a little bit of strength on her would be different. Um that would be my take on it. I think that that would help because again, Sid does a very good job of guarding the 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 ball handler on drives. So for me, that's who that's who I would put on her um, because she is more of a driver than she is, you know, a three point shooter. She's going to shoot threes, you know, off the pass or wide open. Again, she might take some contested threes, but I'll live with that. Um, but yeah, that's who I would put on her. That's that's who I would bet my money on to limit. Shifting focus to uh, our supporting cast, as they've been called, how would you grade uh, their performance? You know, today, yes, but over the tournament, like, well, especially today, like McCabe, Furbach, O'Grady, Ediger, those players. How do you think? That, you know, how, we're yeah. gonna need O'Grady in in um. Monday's game Mm -hmm. Uh, because of her size. Um, She is going to have to not be nice though. I'm going to need her to get a little bit more of an attitude for Monday. (laughs) Um, But we're going to need her. And so I think for her, she just thinks too much. A lot of the times with post players, the reason why they don't develop as quickly is because they're, the game is moving way too fast for them. Mm -hmm. And so when they get the ball, it's like, (laughs) <laughs> they don't know what to do with it. Or if they do get it, they're moving too fast. Um, and so for her, just slowing down, taking your time, and not really worrying about the defender, quote unquote. I don't care what she does. A- as a post player, if you have solid post moves, it don't matter what they're doing. Mm-hmm. You're still going to be able to shoot the basketball. And so a lot of post players get caught up in the defense, caught up in the defense, and it's like, listen, do your post move. Get your, get your feet set. Take your time. Finish over. You will be fine. It's a lot different when you, you know, on a perimeter, when you're trying to beat somebody off the dribble, you ain't got to do all that. Mm-hmm. The backs to the basket and just take your time. But that comes sometimes a little slower with mm-hmm. some post players than others. How, um, how you, yeah, sorry. No, go ahead. No, I, I you were about to continue your thought and I interrupted you. I apologize. Yeah, no, you're fine. And I think um, Taylor, we could, Taylor could be effective in the game. If and when LSU has to go zone, mm-hmm. if and when we are in a zone, 
it's a possibility that she could be helpful for us because they're not a very good system defensive team. They rely on their athleticism and not on principles, defensive principles. So she's going to be left open. <laughs> and so if that is the case, she can be beneficial for us. She's just got to be able, she got to rebound. Like she, everybody got to rebound in the zone. If you cannot rebound, you're going to have to sit on the bench. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing with her this time. I'm not so worried about her defense, quote unquote, mm -hmm. because we're going to be in a zone. That's the point, right? You could sag off a little bit. You know, we should be okay. But rebounding, she cannot be in there like a ping pong, getting tossed mm -hmm. every which way. That. So whoever can do that is going to be on the floor. Uh, final question, then I'll, I'll let you guys go. Thanks for answering all my questions here. Um, on Monday's show, you said that uh, the women's game has evolved since you've played. And this yep. is with respect to refereeing. Uh, but you said that the same refs have been working, uh, that are working now, worked in your day. And it seems to me like you were suggesting that they were uh, officiating a game that's now kind of obsolete. In what ways has the women's game evolved in the short time between when you played and now? And what would you like to see less uh, refs calling less? And what should they? What do they need to emphasize? Thank you. Tyler. The overall quickness, pace, um, talent level, the moves that they are doing are all different than what we were doing. Um, Caitlin is shooting from the parking lot. That was not, that's not a thing. Um, the flopping that is going on now, that was not a thing back when I was playing. There was no trying to sell calls and that was not a thing. Um, so now you have to not only navigate what is a call, but you also have to navigate the changing. Uh, every year there's a different rule. We, we had the arc not too long ago. Now we ain't got it no more. Now we got this. And it's like, the how are the rest supposed to get in a, in a rhythm here if you keep changing the rules every 10 seconds? Figure out what you want and let us stick with that. And then let us get good at that and then continue moving on from there. But it just seems like <laughs> just when the rest get comfortable, oh, just kidding. <laughs> like We're going to do this. And the block charge is one of the hardest calls in basketball. And now it's like every other year is something different. Um, so I think just the overall skill level, and when I say skill level, I'm talking about every player on the court. So before we would have really good players, right? But like, we still have good players throughout the five of them. And they're all bringing something different than what we had before. So I think that changes things, like I said, and then the rules, it just like, we got to stick to something, like <laughs> figure it out and then come to a decision, <laughs> like whatever that may be. By the way, I thought it was a bad charge call on, Terrible. on uh, Sherrod. Terrible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I, just being objective, it was a bad call. Yep. I tweeted that, actually. I sure did. did <laughs> Terrible. Promise, I didn't see that tweet. I, uh, I, my thoughts are authentic, uh, Kashin. But uh, anyways, no, it is a hard call to enforce correctly. And... I don't know that I want the game to be slowed down like the NBA has been slowed down with challenges, but mm -hmm. I do think it's an interesting, it's an interesting concept to allow coaches to challenge foul calls. The NBA has been doing it. I know people don't like the NBA. Some people don't on here. I'm sure a lot of people on here don't like the NBA. That's why they love the college game. But anyways, maybe that's a discussion for a different day. Lomansky, appreciate the super chat. 295 rebounding legend in a season cash will be our good luck charm next Monday. Snuggle them tigers in the post. So did <laughs> so the question is, Kashin, hmm? the question is, did Lemansky mean snuggle because you're wearing a Snuggie? Or That's did exactly mean, what he meant. Or did he mean smuggle and he just wrote snuggle? Nope. I'm going to go with he was trying to be clever, like he okay. always is. Okay. And he said snuggle because I'm wearing a Snuggie. Yes. yes, that's what I'm rolling with. Erica, thank you for the super chat as well. Kim Mulkey went on that rant to get attention. The article didn't tell us anything new. I don't think Erica is too big of a, a Kim Mulkey fan. Uh, majority of the world is not a Kim Mulkey fan. Yeah. <laughs> Erica, thank you for the super chat. Uh, and D. Rollison, StubHub, $78 tickets in New York. Let's have a blackout. 
Seventy-eight dollar tickets. Oh, that's for the cheap. That is cheap. That is really cheap. Shockingly cheap. So uh, thank you for the super chat, D. Ellison. We'll have to check to see if that's gone up at the end of the show. Tyler, absolutely, Tyler. Thank you for being here. He says thanks for answering all my questions. Very informative show. Fantastic questions, Tyler. You get my vote for number one questions. Very good questions from Tyler tonight. And um, all right, uh, how about this? She is Brie Wayne. Girl, are you serious? Zone Morrow is dangerous because she hits all those mid range, all her mid range. Zone is her bread and butter. She adds Georgia, an SEC team tried to zone LSU. Oh. Uh, and LSU will destroy that zone mid range shots all day. We can't be a man the whole time. That's not happening. So <laughs> I am not saying we play zone the entire game. No, but we cannot be in man the whole game. We will get eight alive. That's just a fact. Have you seen LSU guards? Somebody going to get their ankles broke. Like, <laughs> No. <laughs> By the way, Kyrie broke some ankles last night. Anyways, let's go on to the. Michaela Williams had 42 points. It's a freshman. Yeah, you should go back and watch that game. She's like the one player we haven't talked about. Well, because she's been really off since her injury. She hasn't really, like, really, really gotten back to, like, what she was. Yeah. Well, she was 6'3". Don't mean she ain't dangerous now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Amanda wants to challenge you on your claim that LSU's Six foot size across the board is really a factor. Amanda says well, Gabby's are all big. I said that about okay, yeah, but that's not the same. Them girls is big. Did you watch the game? <laughs> Gabby, Sydney, and uh, um, Kate are all undersized compared to USC's guards, except for the little one. We ain't gonna, you know, we except for the little Ivy League girl, no, but other than that, yeah, we all undersized. All right, we've had yeah, our who's bigger than Caitlin. <laughs> We've had our caller on hold here for over an hour. Hey! Thank you for calling Iowa really? Post Game with Kashina Alexander. It's our Iowa Smokehouse line. Who's on the line? Hey, this is Chris. Look, I mean, it didn't seem like an hour. Oh, well. I've enjoyed your show so much. Um, but last, uh, when I called in the last time, uh, I was talking about how uh, Colorado was, you know, really going to play with a chip on their shoulder and blah, 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 and that, and how the local uh denver news was covering it and then throughout the week i saw them soften their rhetoric right so i thought well this is interesting but i guarantee you that that team that colorado team that showed up tonight was not the same one that i saw play whenever i saw them play whoever they played i agree the last time i can't i can't remember it's like i was just shocked i i thought it was going to be close i was all ready to be you know, anxious and, and, and watch the game with trepidation. And then, you know, we were fantastic. So uh, I, I'm still like, who, who, who did we play tonight? You know what I mean? They were, they were terrible. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think Iowa was really good. And I think I would. Yes. I am curious on this. I mean, I know that's a simple statement, but Dan made the comment in the chat earlier, Kashin, that Iowa played great defense. How would you respond to that? Because I do think Iowa's defense was pretty good. The one thing you touted, Cash, ahead of time was, hey, Colorado, because I said that the other day. I'm like, hey, just sit back in his own against this team and make him shoot. And you're like, well, I can shoot. And, you know, uh, Frida Foreman was held in check today. She finished the day with. Um, with four of 13 overall, three of eight from the field, but just 12 points, you can live with that. Um, what w- did Colorado just underachieve, you think, from a jump shooting standpoint? I mean, for the game, they were they shot, let's see, 38 percent from the from the field. Well, did you guys notice that all of their threes were hitting the front rim? So, to me, they got tired. We ran well, them to the, death. Yeah, why would they be tired? Wait, hold on a second, though. I could understand being tired in the second game of a, a weekend, uh, nah. double letter, but they're, they're, why would they be tired on Saturday after having five days off? Let me tell you why. So, and I'm going to be completely honest in this scenario. My last college game, we played at Gonzaga. It was the first round in the NCAA tournament. 
Gonzaga ran the ball like crazy. That was with Courtney Vandersloot back then and, and, and all of those players they had. They ran the ball like we run the ball. And I remember on many timeouts, I'm, I came back, I'm like, I was exhausted. Like, and I couldn't, in the, in the middle of it, I could not figure out why the hell I was so tired, right? Because I felt like I was in shape. I'm always in shape. I'm never this tired. It was the adrenaline mixed with mm. the, the pace that they were paying, playing at. And so for me, I was exhausted. Like, I remember being so tired. Obviously, I was still pushing through it, but I just remember being like, God damn, like, I am tired. And I think it's not so much about the five days. It's the simple fact that when you're in it, you're in it. And they were, I was running like crazy. And for them, you have to now transition that into having to bust your butt back, even though we may not be pushing it, but you got to get back regardless every time. Because the one time you don't, we gonna yeah. be running. We are gonna get a wide open layup. But then now they gotta come back on offense and try to shoot threes, but your legs are gone. So <laughs> like mm-hmm. it just seemed like the shooters that were shooting against Kansas State and other games that yeah. I felt like they weren't even in t- attempting as much at the beginning of the game. I felt like they started to right. jack them up later on. But either way, I felt like they were tired. They looked tired. They looked disjointed. They looked like they were not prepared for what was the product that we have put on the floor. Let's say that. And you would think they would have been since, you know, they we played them last year, you know. So that's kind of I'm scratching my head about that. But also I want to say that, you know, in watching other teams during this tournament and Throughout the year, you know, I see that Iowa plays, uh, in general, a faster paced game than these other teams do. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes some of the games that I've watched, is, they're kind of boring. It's like, come on, you know, because they're used to a lot more action watching the Hawks. So, well, frankly, uh, uh, yeah. the one thing I would say that's different, and Kashin could illustrate this better than I could, but they are, they do play. Iowa is slightly different than what they were last year, and we, it's been well documented how their offense changed when Monica Sonano moved on. I mean, mm. that that has changed things to an extent, Kashin, right? And I would think, you know, I don't know if you can make any direct correlation with the result this evening and, and the performance or lack thereof from Aaron at Vonley. Um, I mean, Quay Miller was really quiet tonight as well. She ended up with five points, two of eight from the field. But like in just in general, I, I just wonder, was it, do we almost forget that, they did. Iowa did look a little differently last year with having a post who was their second leading scorer and Monica Sonano. And now, I mean, mm-hmm. with the exception being Hannah Stolke in places, I mean, a lot of her her points are on fast break runouts. Like, are we forgetting that they kind of played different last year with Monica? I mean, yeah, probably to a degree because you can get into your offense a lot quicker when you don't have to wait for Monica. I mean, honestly, yeah, you can yeah. get into whatever you're running a lot quicker you it's a little bit smoother should i say in regards to the offense that we're running obviously monica is still irreplaceable in regards to having that post presence but it does change your offense it does you have to get we get into our offense fairly quick the times where we're bad is when you see caitlin just pounding the ball at the top of the key forever like (laughs) that that's not our offense I don't know what that is. Well, I just um, felt like, like, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say, I felt like uh, tonight we saw, we played a complete game, you know, um, it, you know, the balance scoring and all that. It was just a beautiful game to watch. But I, I did feel like I kept wondering what's going on with Hannah. And I was so surprised that she was out rebounding them, under, you know, at the post. I, I, that wasn't coming across to me. And I'm just kind of wondering, again, you know, uh, she's, yeah, she just seems a little different. I'm kind of wondering if there's something wrong, but um, they're not, they'll never say. The, no. the other thing I wanted to tell you is, uh, and then y- you can let somebody else on. Um, I watched the post game uh, press conference with uh, Colorado and, uh, and there was some levity there. 
So uh, Sherard talked about, you know, guarding Caitlin. And basically they were saying, you know, you can't really prevent her from scoring because if you try to keep her from doing this, she does that, you know. And then the passing, that's something that everybody, even um, the post-game hype on the network, they were focusing on Caitlin's passing, not her shooting, that passing being phenomenal. So I thought that was, and that that's true. I mean, but um, so back to uh, Sherard says, we what what is uh caitlin's average oh it's 31 and she said and we held her to 29 and the comment and either she said it or the coach said it well we really locked her up that's what they said and le- and then laughed so i mean well you know they're all already over it <laughs> honestly this is one of if you look at it collectively and i don't think that's the truth just from the eye test but if you look at it from a stats perspective chris this is one of yes. the worst performances we've seen from any team defensively against Caitlin Clark because they forced just two turnovers on her, gave up 29 mm-hmm. points. She couldn't hit the broadside of a barn from outside, and yet she had 15 assists, which even if all of those assists were twos, which they weren't because I know Kate had at least two threes off of Caitlin Clark assists, that means those are thirty over 30 points just off of assists, plus the 29 she scored. That means she's responsible for at least 60 points, probably mm-hmm. closer to 70 directly, either on points scored or assists. 70 directly. How many points do they score? 89? 89, <laughs> so yeah. They did mm-hmm. a miserable yeah. job. They did a miserable job yeah. of defending Caitlin Clark. Yeah. I mean, they weren't they weren't even, you know, gonna defend themselves, you know. I think uh, what uh Payne said is that uh, they beat us. We weren't good. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, it's kind of shoulder, you know, shrugging their shoulders. It was just kind of a odd press conference. Of course, the seniors are upset because they're done. But sure. yeah, I just thought, oh, let's inject some humor here. We really locked her up <laughs> with 29 points. <laughs> that was so funny. So uh, anyway, I'm looking forward to LSU. I believe we can win. And um, I'm just going to hang on to this, even if we lose. I'm just still going to believe we can win. So um, I'm looking forward to your show. Monday? Is it Monday night? Monday night. Mm-hmm. Is that what it happens? Okay. Yes. I also want to say to your listeners that the um, summer sausage at Iowa Smokehouse is really, really good. So just want to plug your sponsor. Always appreciate that, Chris. Okay. Thank you, as always, for calling. I appreciate your support. Go Hawks! Go Hawks, Chris. Thank you very much. Appreciate Chris being here. And um, I see a lot of uh, some of the people coming out of the woodworks this evening. I like it. Uh, KCR says, I see a lot of talk about LSU having no class. What do you think about Caitlin being one of the biggest complainers I've ever seen from an Iowa fan? I respect her play, but she is not any classier than LSU, respectfully. I wonder if that's actually an Iowa that fan. That's funny proving that um sure you want to you want to address that class is based on the person judging it i feel like everybody has their threshold when it comes to what they consider class to be um some people feel like oh everything's fine as long as you don't curse some people feel like you know, you should hold yourself to a higher standard or whatever the case is. But at the end of the day, my thing is, as long as you are a good human being off the court, meaning you are not rude to your fans, you are helping your community, you are a role model in that aspect, I don't really feel like we can just throw around the word classless like that because you are doing that. Now, do I think some things can be over the top? Yes. That's the word I would probably use over classless because classless means you classless, period. Like you, you well, ain't got no class in you at all. <laughs> like you just like Classless on the court, right? That's being a little bit more specific. Yeah, this... but you can't be classless if 
she's the first one to an injured teammate. She's the first one to That's, give those okay. scenarios. You, classless is classless. I don't give a damn who it is, whether it's yours, somebody else's. Classless is classless. You ain't got no class in you at all. We just throw that around too loosely in my mind. What would you call this following around, following Caitlin around for as Over long as she did last year? I mean, and unnecessary is what I would call it. I don't consider it classless. I think it was unnecessary and over the top and you wanted attention. That's why you did it. How about so this? for me, it's as simple as that. Lack of class. <laughs> like, I mean, but, but my thing is this, when we're talking about class in general, right? It's usually when people say how you carry yourself in general. Right. And so if in one instance, I'm this or this action is classless or whatever, we're not saying that we are calling her classless. So that's the thing that I'm saying. If you're going to say this was classless or the action was classless, I can't argue. If that's what you want to use, that's what you want to use. But we are calling her classless. And I don't think that an entire game is classless, even like the game today. I have no idea if there's one thing I've learned about Angel for the most part is when she's talking ish, meaning like responding to somebody, usually it's in response to something. Again, I don't think she should be talking to any coach like that. I don't care who, what they said, right? That's just, that's just a respect thing for me. But again, that is your coach. Your coach is the one that says, Angel, relax. Angel, I need you to reel it in. But her coach doesn't do that. Her coach just allows her to fly off the handle because personally speaking, Kim is a user. That's just how I feel about Kim. Kim allows these, I'm going to call it what it is, these black athletes to not have guidance <laughs> in these scenarios. And she just sits back and let them get told to hell to shreds. Like, no. Tell Angel, listen, be who you are. I have no problem with Angel talking stuff. I have none whatsoever. I don't have issues with this. I don't have issues with none of that. Talk your stuff, baby girl. Go ahead. However, there is still a respect level that needs to happen. And I think that is where she crosses the line sometimes. I just don't feel like we should just be naming this child classless. <laughs> like, that's crazy. Because Caitlyn should be classless. That She done cussed up a storm. She done, she done done this. She done done that. Like, we're not calling her classes, though. So my thing is, don't call anybody classless. Neither one of them are classless. They're just emotional people who need guidance. Caitlin needs guidance. Angel needs guidance. They need to do a better job of helping them. And I'm just happy that Caitlin, whatever she got going on right now, I hope she stays there. <laughs> because she exhibited peace today. I don't know what that took, but that is where she is best at. Stay in that zen. Stay in that area, that mindset, whatever you want to call it. Because Angel feeds off of emotion. Caitlin, I think it takes away from her game. You've said that. I think it takes away from her productivity. Like, she could yell. You know what I mean? Like, it's okay if you're like, yeah, let's go. I don't mind that. Right? I don't mind hyping up the crowd. But when you start getting in tit for tat with people and the, and the ref and this and that, it takes away from her game. Angel, it levels up her game. Those two different type of people, which is fine, but just know what you're good at. <laughs> like, just, just, just don't do it. Now, do I like Angel sometimes? No, I'd be like, ah, damn, Angel, like, relax. <laughs> like, you ain't got to have the spotlight on you all the time. Like, Lord, don't you want to get on Twitter and people are like, yay, Angel? Like, damn. <laughs> that's what, sometimes what I think but I mean I'm an emotional person so I can't I can't knock her I have so much I want to say but we can't I can't knock that. her I can't I just can't because if I'm being 100% honest if I was playing right now I would want to play for them yeah yeah I would want to play for them because I like to talk my stuff every now and then you know it might be a little too much now I'd be like okay Angel re re relax <laughs> but the the when you've grown up playing on the playground, that is how it is. 
Literally, that's how it is. People are talking their stuff, waving bye bye. People, you know, look at that is how it is. And so a lot of the times there people don't know how to turn it off or at least lessen it just a little bit. Angel is like she playing on the playground every day. Like she is. <laughs> oh, let me just I, I just want to want to give a short response to something my my take on this. So, as it relates to language and uh, whatever, I'm all for quantifying what you say when you say it, right? So like yeah. like respect obviously comes first, but if you if if someone's behaving in a dumb fashion, you may say that person is behaving like an idiot. All right? You may not say that person is an idiot because mm -hmm. that's unfair to the person's character as a whole. I really do believe that. Right. The person's behaving like an idiot. But I also believe, here's the deal. So I'm all for quantifying, but Kashin, I'm also okay with saying, like, if if Caitlin Clark, or I should say Angel Reese, last year in the, in the national championship game, if after the game she did nothing but celebrated with her teammates, gave Caitlin Clark a handshake, and then do whatever she wants to do in the locker room, when she's with her teammates, I would have said that was a classy move. Do I not have the right to say that was a classy move? Because I don't know what she does in her personal life. I can say that was a classy move while also saying what she did here was a classless move. No, saying it was a classless move, I don't have an issue with. Calling her classless, I have an issue with. Okay. Like if you were just saying like, what she did or this is classless. I'm okay with that. That's your, your opinion. It's just the fact when we start to label her is I, what I don't like. That's sure. my only thing. Like you can, you can say something is classless. You can say one thing is this, or I don't like how she did this or whatever. You are entitled to that. I just don't like how we, we start to put labels on people, ghetto, classless, this, that, like we don't know these people. Like, <laughs> none of y'all know them. So don't put them into this big, like, bubble. Just say, that move was classless. Or, I would have preferred if she would have handled it this way. You're entitled to that opinion. Yeah. And, and I think generalizing is one of society's yeah. biggest problems with language right now. I mean, they've got... Yes, yeah. and I, I'm going to be 100% frank with you. Everybody is feeding into Angel. She is doing what she's doing for attention. It has gotten her tons of NIL deals for acting this way. Like, so at the end of the day, the more you feed into it, the more you call her classes, the more the black people are going to be like, oh, I'm on Team Angel. Like, it's just, it's just, she has created people who are completely against the opposite. Not because they care about Angel, not because they feel like she's a great player. None of the less, just because they want to jump on the side. So my, the only thing, and I'm going to give, the, the utmost respect I can to Iowa fans. And I'm going to put it on Twitter too after this. Well, not right now, but Monday. Do not. If you are going to call somebody classless, do not stoop to her level of whatever that may be. So stay on the high road, people. We talk about Iowa women's basketball and Iowa women's basketball only. If we want to talk about the refs, you can talk about them. But we do not talk negatively about LSU at all. For what reason? Because you're doing the exact same thing you're calling them out for. So why do it? You're just as classless as them if you're going to do that. So at the end of the day, I'm proud of who we are as a, as a whole, but there are some. There are some. <laughs> they need to wheel it in just a little bit. That's all I'm going to say on that note. But either way, I'm excited. I'm happy. This is going to be such a monumental game for women's basketball in general. And I'm just very excited about it. I hope we have the right refs in play that are able to handle this kind of game <laughs> because this is going to be a very intense game. It's going to be a, a, a very baitable game. You know what I mean by that? Uh, people can be baited into doing things. <laughs> in, in, a, in a sense, right? There's going to be things that are going to be baited, meaning Kim Mulkey is going to be trying to get phantom calls called. That means that there's going to be talking. There's going to be, y'all saw the South Carolina LSU game. <laughs> that was a mess. So there's going to be a lot of things that I hope they put the right refs in play. Who have been a part of this. They know how to control themselves. 
and that know how to deal with what we're about to deal with. Will Kim Mul- uh, Kashin, will Kim Mulkey make contact with an official on Monday? Probably. I mean, honestly, I, I will say this. She's definitely going to be out of her coach's box. <laughs> I can tell you uh, that. She's always out of her coach's box. <laughs> <laughs> she's <laughs> always out of her coach's box. Does she even have a coach's box? Like, <laughs> at this rate. I mean, I guess that's what you get for winning how many ever championships and being in the game for however long she's been in the game for. I don't know at this rate. I, I don't have any other excuse besides that. Because, damn, she be in. She be on the court. She might as well go play defense on Caitlin Clark. <laughs> That's how far she is. Well, let, let's hit these last. We, we got a couple callers still in line. I know we're, we're already an hour and a half in, so we got to kind of plow through these callers. So, oh, Hawkeye yeah, Homer. Yeah, we, we do. We do. <laughs> Hawkeye Homer, thank you for the super chat. Appreciate that. And uh, Hawkeye Homer adds, how do you think we can defend without fouling? LSU is great at drawing fouls. How do you think we can pack the paint, force them to shoot? from outside or do you think we can pack the paint and force them to shoot outside thank you uh, for the super chat hawkeye homer okay homer i don't want to answer it because I... <laughs> you don't think they can pack the paint <laughs> no i i, I we'll, we'll it, it is it's not an easy thing to just be in the game plan to not foul like yeah correct there's so many variables with that um I'm just going to hope and pray. That's what I'm going to do. And I just think we have to harp on the word discipline. Like we got to remain disciplined in all aspects of the game. Do not reach. Hannah, you can't be reaching doing stupid stuff. You just can't do it. It, Your hands got to be straight up. You can't reach to get, you know, a steal. I don't want none of that. I just want you to play straight up defense, turn, box out, get the rebound and run. That's it. I don't care if you, I really don't care if the girl scores a point. If she can stay out of foul trouble, run the floor, and box out. I am totally okay with that. Rob Riley in the chat. Thank you, Rob, for becoming a a premium YouTube member here uh, on the show. Appreciate that. And also thank the donation, Rob. Uh, Doug, that's it. it. That's my saying. You see, Doug, stay on the high road. I like it. That's my T-shirt. on the high road. All right, that's your T-shirt. There you go. That's your t-shirt. <laughs> Stay on the high road. I like that. And um, D. Rollison says uh, Kim's outfits are akin to pink urinals. Wow, that's a uh, strong language from D. Rollison with the dollar ninety nine super chat. Uh, thank you, D. Rollison. I try to read every super chat, so uh, thank you for that, Hawkeye Homer. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, thank says, you. how do we stay out of foul trouble? That's my big concern um and we we address that but i mean you can't game plan for it but i think in general you talked about discipline right that helps um yeah it does th- there was at least one i thought hannah sulky got away with a couple fouls today that she was not called for oh. inside <laughs> absolutely we talk about that for a second yeah she definitely got away with a uh i would say at least three but, That's gonna be a pro- if she gets if she gets in foul trouble early against LSU because we've talked about her being one of the only real athletes on this team who exudes athleticism and even though she's playing out of position she's undersized at the five they need her on the floor I know you said Addison O'Grady's got to play but and the crazy part about it and if I pray and I'm gonna send Zen vibes to the coaching staff but I'm sure they know and so I'm 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 just gonna say it. LSU misses more buckets, chippies, than anybody else in the country. And they're okay with missing them. Why? Because they get an offensive rebound. So never think that just because they have an open layup or they got you beat or whatever, that is a bucket. Nine times out of ten is not a bucket. (laughs) So we've got to secure, box out, and secure the rebound because they get all of their points mostly on offensive rebound. It's insane. All right, let's go to uh, our caller here on our phone line and our Iowa Smokehouse call in line. Who's on the line? Hello, you're on the air. They are not on the air. Last call, you're on the air, caller. No? 
Been on hold for a half hour. No? All right. Three, no. Hello. Oh. Oh, hey. <laughs> Welcome. You're on the air. I, uh, I have. I am uh, Mike. I've talked to you before. Hi, Mike. Mike, are you with us? Mike. Oh, I'm. You getting there? How are you guys? We're we're doing good. Are you okay, Mike? You doing all right? Um. Yeah, I'm having trouble connecting. Sorry. Oh, you're good. You're good. You're. You, we got you loud and clear now. Okay. Um. I've got the iPad on and I'm on the phone. Sorry about that. I see. Yep. I am fine. That's great. Okay. Um, you guys have touched on now. You've got me completely confused because I started listening to the uh, LSU classless talk that you guys were having. And um, I kind of, my conclusion on that, I'll just touch on it, is that you're dealing with some kids, you know. You are um, young girls, and Caitlin and Angel both are receiving lots of money for what they do and trying to figure out what to do with it and for it. But um, Mike, the only the only thing I'd say to that, because I said the same thing about the men the other day. When Caden Proctor made his decision to flip flop for what the fourth time, um, yes, they're kids in a sense, but they're also legally adults in a sense. Right. These are, these are adults. They're making Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark. They're making millions of dollars. They are adults. But also, um, it's like. Uh, Someone going into pro basketball, young youngster, twenty one years old, and receiving millions of dollars. Yeah, you know, they I, make not, mistakes. Yeah, these, these young people are not fully developed. I'll admit that. Yes, you're you're correct. On well, that. here's here's a good way to look at it. Think about Caitlin Clark after the uh, championship debacle that went on with Caitlin with uh, Angel. Uh, last year and how she handled it. She very easily could have made that into something a lot worse than it turned out to be. Lisa Bluter wasn't having that. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> nope. Not under it's Lisa that? Bluter's watch. She so was not. Lisa and I'm, I can tell you for without a doubt in my heart that Lisa Bluter had a conversation with her before they went to uh, media about it. Just to make uh, sure. I think you're right. She knew how to handle the situation if she didn't already know. Caitlin is a pro as far as media is concerned. I'll give her that. But I'm 100% certain that Lisa Bluter, just to make sure <laughs> that she was on the same page because they did just lose. And they are kids. And sometimes emotions get the best of you. And I'm certain that she talked to her. That's the difference in leadership is what I'm talking about. I totally agree with you. And I, because she said the exact right thing there in that Tim Mulkey could be a Lisa Bluter and she's not. Nope. She, um, she could calm down a lot of those situations when she does. Yeah. But I would like to get on a couple of things that I wanted to talk to you about. And I mean, let's talk some real basketball. Like I have played, like I talked to you a couple, couple of games ago and I moved from Philadelphia to Denver and mm -hmm. followed Iowa girls and guys basketball because a good buddy of mine that I played ball with was a coach of uh, Wisconsin for a long time, a guy named Bo Ryan. And um, 
played a lot of ball, college ball, high school ball, and, and afterwards back in the Philadelphia area and watch a lot of basketball. But uh, I paid attention to the Big Ten because of my, uh, my good friend, Bo. We used to follow Wisconsin and just got into that Big Ten game of things, watching them all the time rather than the East Coast. But uh, I got to say this: I, when I came to Denver, very interested in the Iowa girls, just because of Caitlin Clark and the program that they had. But um, I got to watching. I, I've been to about five Colorado women's basketball games, and I saw like some great games that Colorado played. They played UCLA. I saw them play Southern Cal, Juju, um, Utah, you know, all top teams. Um, Miss Stanford. But uh, the UCLA game, they got beat at the end. Uh, I have to say this. I am in shock and had no... No clue as to how that all happened tonight, today. Um, Kashin, that was pretty incisive what you what you said about your reasoning behind the whole thing about getting tired. Yeah. And uh, Iowa make Iowa making a Colorado run. I thought, you know, I never really considered that, but I believe that that is what what happened there is it just was like a perfect storm. I always pushing them. I mean, that's not the Colorado team I just watched. I fully expected Iowa not to be able to win this game. And I taped the game. I was doing something today. And when I came back, I told everyone, don't text me with the score. I want to watch this game. And uh, was in complete shock as to the final outcome. Okay. But, um, Corey, the, uh, the one thing I wanted to also talk about as far as Tasheen saying, uh, this is, to me, the biggest turnaround factor on this team. I think Lisa Bluter needs to answer for for uh, not giving her playing time earlier. And you talking about Sydney? Corey, I gotta go. Go ahead. You talking about Sydney? I am. Oh, okay. I I think that she brings to that team toughness. I think she is a great defender. She is just like, like you said, I think she can guard just about anybody. Yeah, I agree. And yeah. I think that, the, I, I believe that uh, Gabby should have been sitting like a quarter of the way through the season. And I am actually really shocked that Gabby came on like she did. I mean, we can go like just about the whole season where she couldn't do anything. Yeah. I mean, she still can't, you know, when she, I had the same reaction you did to Jean when she made that fake and drifted the hoop. I went to sweat. I almost fell off my chair <laughs> because I swear it, she, I, in my mind, the only thing that she could do is pretty good defensive player, and she showed that she was a really a good defensive player last few games. But all season long, I felt the same way. Corey has she's undersized. She's pretty good defensive player, but not a shutdown defensive player. Well, and let ahead. me just make something clear because I'm not, and I and I gave her praise earlier. Can we also acknowledge she had, what, zero points against West Virginia last time out. She had three points in the fourth quarter today, hit some late garbage threes. So, 
not saying that she's not been really good at times, but I'm just like, let's not, I just get a little bit worn out. Not with nothing, <laughs> but I'm just saying like you watch these broadcasts and I have to hear it every single night about how important Gabby Marshall is to this team. And here on the side, we got Sydney Falter who's six of six from the field. And he's got like 10 rebounds and the commentators don't she's want to a, talk. She's about a her. bulldog. She is a bulldog. I, I like, like Gabby Marshall. You know, I, just, I just would like to be able to give the proper. I, I like Gabby Marshall. too. I, I love, I was uh, a football team, women's basketball team. Love them are in their corner. But I sit here and look, you know, look at the games that they play. And I have watched a lot of film old games and when Monica Zizano left, I watched a lot of her film, a lot of the I'd watch the game and then watch the film. I looked at her and said, Oh my God, she was really a lot better than I thought. Those inside moves, right or left hand, over people. We were never gonna and I still can't understand why Iowa couldn't get a big to play with Caitlin Clark. If you're if you're a big player, wouldn't you want to be playing with Caitlin Clark and get all of those passes? You'd be a star. If you weren't already. So anyway, losing Monica and Warnock, I thought there's no way that Iowa will duplicate what they did. Her jun- Caitlin's junior year last year, but they they have proved me wrong. That's why basketball is a team sport. You can have a Caitlin Clark, and she is the reason why they are where they are. But without playing as a team, I think they box off great. I think Iowa is a well fine tuned team. I think Lisa Bluter, even though she deserves the blame for not having Sydney a falter in there sooner also deserves credit for having that team really really playing well really playing as a team and I even though I am shocked that they are here I expected them to get knocked off by that West Virginia game was to me, I have never seen a team play so physical and get away with it. Mm-hmm. And get away with it. I mean, everybody, and I will complain about the refs. I think the women's Division One game needs better refereeing. And Kashin, you hit the nail on the head. A lot of these referees get in a game like Today, or West Virginia, let's say. Big game for a referee. They get in there and they start blowing the whistle early and quick. And it takes everybody out of the game. And what happened with West Virginia was they blew the whistle. You know, they they let West Virginia get away with a lot. And then they started blowing the whistle in the second half, you know, in Iowa's favor. They were playing kind of catch up and it it really screwed the game up you know as far as just the um, pace of it and the way that it was going and so many people complaining about the referees in that game but I, I mean that's how West Virginia that. plays though that's how West Virginia plays that's how they play all season so the refs are going to adapt to them and not us because that's how they play right all Right. Season one. Uh, well, somebody Mike. made a statement that the game, you know, the games before that, you could look at Virginia's foul total, and they were just as high as they were against Iowa. They were. You know, they played physical games. Absolutely, and they're going to get a lot of that physicality uh, on Monday. Mike, appreciate you calling in. I got to move on, but uh, thank pre- you. Appreciate you always, sir. Good to- Good listening to you guys. Take Thanks, care. Mike. Thank you. All right. Beautiful stuff, folks. Beautiful stuff. All right. We'll hit some quick uh, hit some quick ones here before uh, 
girl MVP put some final words here. Lemansky says, uh, appreciate the, the uh, super chat, Lemansky. Expecting many fouls on both teams on Monday. I am. Um, does that favor Iowa? Probably does, right? You don't want this to become another dogfight. That's you're the only one here, Kashin. Why would I want that? <laughs> that we, don't, we, don't, we don't excel in dog fights. That's not our game. <laughs> so, so a lot of fouls are good. Like yes. free if, if you and I want a free throw <laughs> contest against LSU. Yeah, like if this is gonna sound terrible because it's not gonna be an enjoyable game to watch. I'm gonna tell you that right now. So if you thought it was gonna be enjoyable, it's not happening. So if there are fouls. Well, that could go two ways, Corey, because there's going to be a lot of fouls. But the problem is, is that we have to be very conscious that we share the fouls. <laughs> Dude, the fouls don't rack up on certain people. Um, but there's going to be a lot of fouls, uh, unless they just want us to be a junkyard dog fight, which is not, I don't think, enjoyable for anybody on that end either, because people gonna, somebody going to get hurt. Her, uh, let's see. What does that say? Herulin? Sure. We'll roll with that. All right. What's up with Addy? Game too fast for her? Um. Yeah, I said that earlier. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Outlaw Josie Wells, I think Caitlin had a uh, poor three-point shooting during the last three or four games. Are there any reasons for this? Do you have a theory as to why she's got a kind of a shooting slump going right now besides just really good individual defense Kashin? I really don't know. Um I I don't know. She's kind of been off since the Big Ten tournament. Um yeah I don't know. D Rollison, thank you for the super chat. Cash High Road Alexander. Love it. That's me. You can thank my mama. <laughs> T-Hawk, thank you for the super chat. The rest will be on LSU side. Caitlin on the bench. You heard it here first. Why do people feel like that? Like, why do they want? Why do we feel like they want LSU, quote unquote, America's villains to win? Yeah, I don't like I don't. That oh. logic doesn't. I, somebody answer me because in the chat or something because I'm confused on where that's coming from. D. Rollison, thank you for the super chat. We'll need some Lemansky wisdom Monday night to counteract the trolls who will show up after the game. Yes, the LSU fan base, they love to show up in droves. Kashin, the LSU women's basketball fan base shows up in droves. So anyways. Droves? Droves. D-R-O-V-E-S, yes. Okay. Dennis wants to know if uh, one person's actions carry over to the team. Ours. I can't speak for everybody's, but y'all saw today, Caitlin being in Zen mode, peace, kumbaya mode. You see what that did for us, but I can't speak for everybody. Evan, uh, if Iowa throws the ball at Kim Mulkey while she's out of her coaching box and she deflects it, would that be a technical foul on her instantly? Nope, ball stays in place. She's part of the court. And not, I'm not saying that to be funny. I'm dead serious. <laughs> If she's on the court or if she's anyway. Yeah, so like the if the ball hits a coach and it comes back in the court, it's like it people just play it. It's like a we I don't I've never understood the rule. I think it's weird. If you're standing out of bounds, you should be out of bounds. So like <laughs> So what is this question asking? What is Evan saying? Like deliberately He's throwing being funny. Ball. He's just saying if we throw it at Kim Oki and she throws it away, if she gets a technical. <laughs> okay. Um all right, we've got uh, Drill MVP in our Iowa Smokehouse call in line. Drill, before you uh, say what you're cool. going to say, and I do appreciate you being here, let me give a quick plug to RTI Threads. I need to plug them once more because they are proud supporters of our post-game show and post-game coverage throughout the year, not just for women's basketball, for the men, for football. It's all great, and we appreciate RTI Threads over in North Sioux City. Check out their Iowa Baseball Swarm merchandise. Support Iowa Baseball, NIL. Iowa Hawkeye Athletics, everything, and the show, along with the small business. Not business, it's actually really growing. RTI Threads. Check it out, iowabaseballswarm.com and rtithreads.com. Go ahead, Drill MVP. Well, Corey, I was just about to hop in and respond to everything and go off my points, so I appreciated you cutting me off there, but 
you know, Corey, something more rare than a 16 beating a one was Doug said something mean about a caller. Doug saying anything mean. If Doug says something mean about somebody, you know you've lost the plot. <laughs> Doug is the nicest person I've ever met on here in, in terms of calls. And for him to say something mean, slightly negative. Somebody help me out. I'm lost. What are we talking about? Do you about? know who Doug is? He he calls into the men's show all the time. He's a great guy. He's very cogent with his language, very loving guy. He just seems like a great all-around person. And he slightly made a comment that was mean about the last caller. And for him to do that, I mean, that would be like the uh, – Detroit Pistons beating the Boston Celtics in a seven-game series. Okay, I'm he, with you. He's now. just, I'm here, I'm he's here. just acclimating himself to the live chat audience. Okay. I'm with you I, I don't think so. I don't Thank think so. Does the type of guy, in my opinion, he's just the type of guy I could see bringing flowers to his wife every single day. I mean, he's just that type of guy, it seems like. I, he, he Honestly, he just seems like the best guy in the world. That's funny. Yeah, I don't even know him. I have no relationship to him or anything like that. But, hey, he's a nice guy. So I want to talk about this game coming up tomorrow, uh, Monday. Yeah. Iowa is currently one-and-a-half-point favorites. What do you think about that number at one-and-a-half? Damn, that's a stressful game. <laughs> yeah. yeah if that's I, the I don't – I'm the wrong person to ask because I don't really do the whole betting one-and-a-half. That's a – yeah. But – how about you tell us what you feel about it? I think it's going to either be a cl very close game or I think LSU is going to blow out Iowa. I don't – I think this reminds me a lot of the South Carolina game from last year where I could see LSU completely dominating the offensive rebound game to where it could be like a 28-3 to three type margin or something insane like that, and they just get like 40-second chance points. That that would be my biggest concern if I was an Iowa fan. I well, mean, I hear that. That is a valid point. My only thing is LSU ain't blowing nobody out. Exactly. They didn't blow out Rice. They didn't blow out Middle Tennessee. Certainly didn't they blow, ain't blow out nobody out. And yeah. now I Middle Tennessee does have like a six six girl. You know, so I'm not I don't really it, they are what they are. Rice ain't got nobody big. But my only thing is is that's their issue, is they have a very tough time scoring. So I don't oh. see them. I'm not saying I don't see them beating Iowa. That is definitely a possibility, but I do not think it will be a blowout by any means. Well, when I'm let me let me phrase it in a way. Like you all said, the LSU Middle Tennessee State game wasn't a blowout. LSU won by 27 points. Yeah, it, I think Iowa, if they were to lose by 20, it would be like a five, 10 point game in the fourth quarter. But with the fouls and stuff, it would make the margin of victory look deceptive. Middle I'm talking about they blow out a good team. I'm not talking about somebody that ain't never been Middle Tennessee the whole State season. was up late in the third quarter, Drill. And yeah, I know, and that was you won by 27. But I'm just saying three three of the four three fourths through the game, it was close. So I mean, yeah, it, it got lopsided in the fourth, but I mean the score is not indicative of that game, is all I'm saying. I get you. I get you. And I and to give Iowa credit, they in my opinion, this path they have gone down is the exact path I would want them to go on down to. If I was facing this type of team, Colorado's got a big center. They're a really talented team. They've proven they can beat the best of the best all year. And you had to grind it out with a very, very physical West Virginia game. And I think that toughness can translate to the LSU game. Do you agree with that? Uh, yes, I know. Um, because. West Virginia ain't have nobody in the country has anything close to what um, LSU's rebounding, so that's new. By the way, Daryl Eric says you need to calm down. <laughs> okay, Corey, I'll just be like this for the rest of the call. Amanda yeah, says you have the energy that uh, she wishes she had. So, anything else, Daryl? Um, yeah, I just wanted to ask uh, Kashin. I know she rooted and was very high on the Oregon State train. I Oregon sure State looked elite against Notre Dame. They had 26 turnovers and still was control of that game most of the way through. I, I think South Carolina could lose to Oregon State. I agree with that statement. You know and what? the only reason why I'm going to say that is this. Because you love you some Oregon State. That's why you're going to say that. 
No. Definitely yes. not going to say that about the Beavers. So what I am going to say is this. South Carolina's weakest point is their immaturity. Their players are very lackadaisical at times, and that's what happens is they get comfortable. They don't have kind of like that killer instinct that South Carolina has had in the previous years. And so sometimes they get kind of the lackadaisicalness with them, um, where there's teams that should not be in a game with them that are. There are teams that are good, but they still should be better. So Indiana. Their lack of maturity is what gets them. These are the same players that was doing the Macarena at the beginning of the half. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> the Macarena. Hello, lock in. Like, that's the <laughs> team that Don has actually been talking about all season, that her locker room is a hot mess, right, in regards to, like, the immaturity of it. You know, like, they're just a bunch of school kids. Like, you know, that kind of scenario. And you could see that if you pay attention enough. So, yeah, I ex- absolutely believe that Oregon State has a chance. Darilla, appreciate you calling in, sir. Yeah, no, no problem, Corey. I'm glad you decided to cut me off. I'm sure everyone in the chat just thought the energy level was way too high for this call. So I just, I I promise you, that's not what it was. I just keep having people add themselves to the show. And uh, Doug, Doug, I see in the chat, Rob's in there as well. And I think we just had our caller from New York. So I'm trying to wrap this thing up, but we'll just go real (laughs) quick here. Go real quick here. Uh, let's go to, let's go to our Iowa Smokehouse call in line. First of all, we've got Rob who told me he was going to call in Rob. Welcome. I've been threatening all year long. Haven't I? You have, I I know Rob, I personally, he's a good friend of mine. So, uh, thank you for calling in Rob. And you said you texted me a while back and you said you had something to add to our previous conversation. Something to Kashin. I can add to anything that you're talking about because I'm, I'm I'm hyper right now. I'm pacing around still from from this game, okay. but yeah, no, I've been asking for the LSU matchup since the horn sounded last year. Like we want them again this year. I, I don't know if I'm alone on this, but I've been I've been begging for LSU all year long. I want the rematch. I think we got their number. You, you're gonna get it. <laughs> yeah, no, um, and, and maybe I'm a, a a homer here, right? And, and bleeding black and gold. But yes. uh, boy, I tell you what, I probably watch too much women's basketball now. I haven't watched a man men's game for I don't know how long. But uh, wow, I, watching South Carolina scouting them up, watching LSU, watch a South Carolina LSU game in there. I tell you what, I'm just not scared of either of those teams. I don't know. I, it just call me stupid. I'm well, not I'll, scared of them. I'll agree on on this, Rob. I, I think. I agree with you that I think they match up a lot better with LSU than they do with South Carolina, just because I think, first of all, I think I I have more faith in the discipline of South Carolina, even though what you said, Kashin here a couple of minutes ago is fair that uh, they've kind of been weird at times. They lost their cool Mm -hmm. against LSU in that tournament game. But um, yeah, I mean, LSU has not been overly impressive of late. I mean, again, everybody's for the most part, the exception being the fourth quarter against Middle Tennessee, Middle Tennessee State, everybody's playing them close. And um, you know, the only thing I'm I'm a little bit concerned with is the short prep, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I, don't, I, I mean, I know they have a short prep too, but you know, I was the team that kind of has to respond with the you know the chess play here, Kashin, because they're the ones looking to correct what happened last year in the, the national championship. And maybe Lisa Blue would say, we don't care about that game. That was last season. It's a different year. But, um, you know, they gave up a lot of points in that national championship game. Defensively, they were bad. Yeah. I don't remember what the, the rebounding differential was, but it wasn't good. So even though I agree with you, Rob, I think they match up better with LSU than they do against South Carolina. I do not. I, I never wanted either rematch. I was hoping that they could avoid both of these teams and still make a run of the championship, but alas. Well, just uh, just looking at LSU's lineup, I, you know, watching them earlier, I, I came home and watched uh, the second half of that game on tape before I watched the Iowa game just to kind of get into the, the, the mood. And uh, Van Lith does nothing offensively for that team. It's almost like they ignore her out there. They don't want her to do anything offensively. Pretty good defender. Their downfall, 
but that's none of my business. Um, Angel Reese, I, I, I think we can contain her. If we get to run, I think Hannah Hannah can outrun Angel down the court. Yeah, she can. <laughs> so to me, to me, the it, it's back to Sid of Folter. Sid is the the factor for us. I think if Sid can uh, contribute defense against uh, Angel Reese, hold her own in the boards, and of course, if if, if we're hitting our threes, that's that's the team that's going to go all the way. Tonight they play this game that they played tonight against LSU against South Carolina. We're in any game we play, but you get Gabby Marshall with deer in the headlights <laughs> and Kate Martin not hitting shots, then we're in trouble. But when they're yep. all hitting, taking the pressure off Caitlin, then she can do a lot of things. She's like, I think she just threw up some threes tonight just for fun. She was driving to the hole. She made a point of driving to the hole. Can they stop me? No. Yeah. Oh, they still can't stop me. No. Again. She took a couple. I mean, I know we use this term a lot. She took, I mean, Caitlin took a couple of ridiculous logo threes. The one she's limping up the court. Yeah. And she steps past the half court line and, and launches maybe the, the longest three I've seen her take. They uh, were up by 19. She said, you know what? Like, this is what I thought in the moment. I felt like she was doing exactly what she needed to do, which was driving. And then she was like, oh, I miss shooting. <laughs> yeah. That's honestly how I felt because she didn't need to shoot a three. Like, like she no. really didn't need to in this game. It was wide open, but I feel like she just missed shooting a three. I think sometimes she plays to the uh plays to the tickets that are getting sold. She knows that she has to launch a few of them. Yeah, so that was kind of funny. But nonetheless, I agree with everything you said in regards to if we play like we play tonight, yes. Well, they've been starting slow in so many of their games recently, and that was just nice to see them come out, throw the punches early put Colorado back in their heels and, and Colorado was stunned. There was no answer and they couldn't hit any shots in the first half. So yeah, it was nice to get a relaxing game in <laughs> that West Virginia game was absolutely no fun the other night. <laughs> it was fun being there when they won, but man, anyway, I got oh. lots to say, lots to argue about, but uh, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I know you guys are running late tonight, but I, I'll, I will call in Monday night unless I'm too heartbroken if we lose, but I'm, I'm, expecting a celebratory call sounds good okay. Rob. Well, i can't wait to argue with you then hey i i love why i've been watching all you guys but just i've been watching every one of your conversations since the first night you're on kishin so yeah i love it love what you guys are bringing appreciate it very much thank, thank you, you Rob. yeah we'll talk to you later Corey. thank you sir all right appreciate rob being here and uh let's see we've got uh our iowa smokehouse caller doug who just wanted a quick word, and I'm I'm guessing that Doug. Oh, this is the Doug. Oh, Doug. Doug. I, yes, okay. Doug. He wasn't trying to be mean, and that's what you're here to do, right? You're you're you're. No, no, I, oh no, I, I was trying to be a little mean. Uh, okay. The live chat's different. That's the reason why people don't realize you guys get worked up in the live chat, but we can't see that on the other end. When we're on Streamyard, I don't see the live chat unless I get my phone out. So I don't know what's going on. So it's a little bit different. Um, no, just very happy for the women. Um, you know, and, uh, again, thank you for the kind words, uh, Darrell. I, I really appreciate that. No, I'm pretty sure I'm older than Darrell. I, He's I'm a big sure. fan of yours, Doug. Just uh, well, and, and I like Tony Lomans. Oh, I, you know, I think 90% of the people here are legit Hawkeyes. Love the Hawkeyes. I I'm okay with the fire Fran talk. I, I don't like some of this talk that gets personal about the players, Hey, Gabby is Gabby. Uh, I, I was cheering every time today and told my dad, well, they don't have to shut up about Gabby tonight. And I was joking. It wasn't, <laughs> you know, but again, um, again, if I'm ever taking your show away, Corey, you can shut me up anytime. And okay. I know that's a lot of, uh, Hey, I don't mind when someone calls in and uh, talks and, you know, gives their opinion. Hey, because if, if you ever offend me, I'll just cut you off. Okay. Uh, okay. We got a deal. Yeah, I mean, I try not to, um, but again, it's it's a hey, we gotta we gotta like what we have right now. Um, Monday only comes around, well, not very often. Um, yep. Hopefully, it becomes the norm. Uh, we'll see. We have some great recruits coming in. Yeah, she Caitlin was locked in. That was special. She's special, and um, sure that's the reason why you should always have hope in any game where Caitlin Clark's playing. Because she's special. 
And uh, again, thank you for anyone that has nice comments. And to the people that have negative comments about me, uh, they're probably deserved. Okay, thank you, guys. Thanks. And stay on the high road. Appreciate it, sir. All right, appreciate it, Doug. Yeah, he's too nice. Because I'm definitely not telling somebody who ever got negative comments. I deserve it. Absolutely not. <laughs> yep. The Reverend P was, was right about him. Yeah, he real nice. Mm -hmm. All right. I, this is the last caller. I'm cutting things off here. I think I know who this is. Because it's from a caller out east. Yeah, he really Thank you for calling our right. Iowa Smokehouse call in line. Who's on the line? Hi, this is Annie from Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn! Hi, Annie. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I doing great. That was a great game today. They played really together. It was a great team effort, and I really hope they can play that kind of game again on Monday. And I do agree with Kashin. I think it's going to be a frustrating game to watch. So I hope the refs are on target and on spot because what took place last year was a fiasco. So <laughs> let's hope there's more consistency with the refs, but we won't get into that. The other thing is, last year, if you remember correctly, they got killed with a lot of three-pointers by that one particular player. I don't know. Mm -hmm. if Carson. I remember her. Yeah. He just came out of the blue and killed them. I mean, by the half, she was just really put Iowa against the wall. So I don't think they're that type of shooting team this year where you got that big outside shooting and those consistent three-pointers. So that's a little promising for Iowa, I think. Going it's into possible. The that was, yeah, yeah. I just, just saying, just doing some observations. So I do think it's going to be kind of frustrating, like you said, because it's going to be an aggressive game. Let's put it that way. I'm, I'm not expecting this to be kind of like the game we had today. I, I, I don't know if the word is physical. You know, I just hope it isn't really a physical game, and, and the refs are consistent. That's my point. And I don't think the three, the outside shooting was. Anywhere near it was last year for LSU. That's my point. So, uh, with that said, I'm hoping the Bulls and I was caught. <laughs> Literally. Kashin, you watched LSU more than, than I have. And by the way, T Hawk, I don't want to ignore the super chat we put up on the screen. Iowa holds the most important piece, Caitlin Clark. Absolutely. But uh, to go a step further to what um, Annie said, just this comment earlier that I wanted to get to LSU being different than last year. Carson's a player that's not around this year, correct? She she moved on. Yeah, she's right. not around, yeah. but before that game, she was a non-factor. Yeah. So is there so, somebody on that roster that uh, in the rotation that you think could be that player for LSU on Monday where they kind of emerge, especially if I was giving up shots from three and kind of kind of settling for making LSU take shots from outside? Michaela Williams. Okay. And she's done it before. It's not I, like she'd be totally she's done it before. <laughs> yeah. So I don't I mean, I think that like I said, she's coming back from injury. She's kind of still getting her feet wet. Doesn't mean she could just catch fire because she definitely can. Um, and she at the beginning of the year was their most consistent three point shooter. So for me, and she could play. Like I talked about her way back, way back in the beginning of the season. So that's the one person I feel like to me, is their X factor. As far as Angel is going to be Angel, and uh, Anissa Morrow is going to be her, Flage Johnson is going to be her, but I feel like kind of how you said we're not talking about her, that's a person that can hurt us. Uh, All right. I was yeah. going to say real quick, is there is there any, any uh, thought, I don't know how many, I don't think there were, many, if any, conversations between the Iowa coaching staff and Anissa Morrill during the transfer portal recruiting process. But I know Lisa Bluter, she she had said that she reached out to Anissa Morrill. So you wonder, that, that's that been out there. Does Do the Iowa players that, you know, whether it be Addison or Hannah, or whoever, like, do you take exception to that and use that as motivation? Like, hey, here's a, a, a gal that our coaching st staff thought was better than me. Like, we're going to use this as motivation against Nisa Moore. I know she's a really talented small forward or forward, whatever position she's playing now. I don't know if they care. <laughs> probably. Uh, I, I probably would just because, you know, like I said, I'm like Michael Jordan. I take everything personal. So I probably would have. 
but I don't think Hannah cares. Go ahead, put it up there. Of course yep. you will. Um, but I don't think I don't think they care. <laughs> Honestly speaking, I don't think they care. I I hate to bring this up, but by any way, would you happen to know what Angel happened to said happened to say to the UCLA bench on her way at on her way to the bench? She told her to watch her mouth. Oh. Okay. Who told who to watch her mouth? What? Who Angel told, Reese to told the that? assistant coach to watch her mouth? Angel Reese told the assistant coach of the opposing team to watch her mouth. Yeah, Angel oh. Reese fouled out, and you could see the bench got up, started clapping. They must have said something. I don't know. We we can't see oh. that. But Angel oh. was walking oh. off the court, and you could see her head snap, and she said something back right. to them. She went off right. end of the game. As she was walking past the coach, she goes like, watch your mouth. <laughs> like, oh. I don't know what the coach said to her on the court. I have no idea right. what that was. Right. But you could see that I, she was I, heading straight to the bench and then her head just snapped. And then oh, she said whatever yeah. she said. So I don't know what it was, was said. Ballistic, yeah. Yeah, the coach, but my thing is this, like, regardless of whatever coach says, we don't, I don't think you should engage right. with coaches of any sort. Let your coach handle it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, just, yeah. I'm yeah, sure Tim Moki would be very happy to handle it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, just I leave it alone. I don't that topic, but I do agree what you said. There has to be a level of respect. That kind of yeah. sums it up really well. That, so, that's I mean, the best way to sum that all up, Christine. It just needs to be a level of respect. You said it very it. well. <laughs> That says it all. <laughs> yeah, that's all. That's all. It was just a simple that's fact. I don't care what that lady said. <laughs> Unless she called you the N-word or something, then okay. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Say what she got to say. But be a level of respect. That was excellent. <laughs> yeah, like other than that, I just, yeah, give me a, just a, there's got to be a bottom line, whatever that may be. <laughs> to be a bottom line, right. Exactly. It's always great to talk to you guys. I hope we can talk Monday and have a celebration here. Okay. <laughs> yes. man, thank you. Thank you for the call. Have a happy Easter. Appreciate it. Have a great week ahead. And well, we'll talk to you. Uh, boy, I'm losing track of what day it is. It is Saturday. Tomorrow, Sunday, we got uh, the game Monday. So, uh, boy, it's going to sneak up on us fast, Kishin. Again, short prep coming off this win yeah. in the NCAA awesome. tournament. Um, again, I have a uh, question, uh, though. Yeah. When is the Final Four's first game? Well, wouldn't it be next Friday? Is or uh, no, sorry. I, I think both games are Saturday. Both games would be next Saturday, and then the national championship is Monday, right? Isn't that sounds national- about right. That sounds normal. We're gonna look this up. If I can figure out how to type on my phone. <laughs> Somebody said Friday and Sunday. Okay, that sounds better. Yeah, so the men do the whole Saturday, Monday thing. The women do Friday, Sunday. That makes sense. All right, cool. Yep. Yep, that's it. And uh, Sunday afternoon um, on ABC. So, anyways, um, the Hawkeyes defeating the Colorado Buffs tonight, 89-68, to and earning a rematch with LSU in the Elite Eight. The Hawkeyes and the Tigers, if you missed any of our breakdown of this matchup, check it out. We spent a lot of the show discussing it, try to get a, a clip out on social media for tomorrow. It's kind of a condensed version of a combined version of everything we talked about or everything Kashin provided as far as her insight. So Monday, 6 p.m. Central Time, folks, on ESPN. Big game with big ratings down the pipeline for ESPN. Kashin? I don't have the energy or the strength of desire to run through the box score. If anybody wants that information, head over to HawkeyeSports.com. I, can I do, do have something very important, though. Sure. Go ahead. You guys tell us all the time how much you enjoy the show. You love our dual you know, banter back and forth and all that stuff. So everybody, how many people do we have in here now still sitting here? Yeah. Well, now we're under 450. We were at about 600 yeah. most of the show. It's 450 people watching at 1140 at night. I love y'all. But nonetheless, um, I need all 450 of y'all to push that like button. Please and thank you. Like, it will really make my Easter. Although it is already Easter already over here. But y'all can do that. I'm not usually, like, a person who's, like, 
monitoring likes, but how many likes do we have right I now? Do. How many likes is it in the stream right now? 181. 181. Okay, so and I need at least I need at least another 200. If you ain't like, like, please. All right. Just as you said that, 16 more people hit the like button. So we're up to 197. But again, folks, if you don't See, know what the that was my people. It's that little thumbs up button below the video. So all you gotta do I is hit that little like button. Yo, those 16 people, they they those people are legit. Are, are you saying they're the real ones? They the real no, I'm just saying because you know, I just asked them, I put them on the spot. You know what I mean? And they like, you know what, Cash, you right. Click. I like them kind of people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my kind of people. 14 more people just hit the like button. Machine. 14 more people just hit the like button. <laughs> you know what? Listen. That's why I stay up till 12:41 a.m. for y'all. It, it's the, it's the it's the 14 and the 16. It's for y'all. It's legit for y'all. Yep. Eleven more That's people it. just eleven more people just hit the like button. <laughs> Anyways, are you playing yeah. with me? Are you serious? No, I'm being serious. We're up to two twenty two. It's a live count. Listen, I yeah. promise you, it's the people. It is the people. This is the reason why like when you call me and I say, you know what, I got you. That's why. It's I those people right there. Of the four hundred some people that we still have on here, my guess is of the people who are not hitting the like button. They probably don't know how. And I mean, I know that sounds Maybe. really That's dumb. fair. But that guess what? I'm not trying to sound these, dumb. These Iowa fans right now who have already hit the like button, they are channeling the discipline that we need for Monday. That's what we are doing right now. We are channeling the discipline right now. We're starting it today. See? That's it. Yeah. I like it. Uh, you, I like can it. I just say something? And let me real quick. You talked about discipline earlier. It's sometimes very easy when you're sitting on your couch eating a bag of Fritos while watching an Iowa game and sipping down some whiskey or rum or whatever you like to drink for you to sit there and say, can't you get a rebound? It's not that difficult. Well, I could say the same thing about hitting a like button, right? Like all you got to do is scroll oh, down. Like if you can't hit the like button, you can't hit the thumbs up button. Can you really get mad at Addison O'Grady for not getting a rebound? discipline this is where we start this is the energy we are channeling you see so we already gave our girls i don't know how many extras but we didn't gave them a few extra likes and discipline so that's that we're gonna move that forward yep and if you're watching this after the fact folks remember it's always available on podcasts so if you're on spotify apple google amazon anchor wherever you listen to your podcasts it's there so be sure i, I never mentioned this i mean i literally never mentioned this but please that's okay i got it a five a, a like on the video <laughs> and a five star rating on apple or spotify all right oh well, hell I, I gotta go do that then because i ain't done that part yet so let me go ahead and never, um, we got a lot of people that listen to the audio that that don't rate so please go ahead and give us a five star mm. on your favorite podcast platform even if you're not listening regularly by audio if you watch on here um, that would help us as well so because yeah, i can't be telling people to do stuff i ain't done i ain't that type of person no. so <laughs> i gotta go ahead and do what you just said those for those other two platforms i don't be on but i'm gonna do it though i'll tell you what why? i'm about because i got discipline Corey. that's and, why and you, you are a woman of your word you're That's a woman of your word. That too. That's true. So I'm happy that it's a Saturday night because I was thinking, man, she is going to have a short night before work. But I'm assuming you don't work tomorrow. So I'll take that. Um, rest up. We've got, um, let's see. How we have hours? women's basketball. We have, uh, we have Elite Eight games tomorrow, right? I can't wait. I've been watching basketball like all week. It's ridiculous at this point. But. I can't wait because you got Oregon State. You got the Beavers versus the Gamecocks. And then Texas is playing. Who are they playing? Uh, Who's Texas playing? Not Stanford. Stanford lost. Who are they playing? NC State. Uh, NC State. Boom. Yeah. I don't know that one. That's a toss-up for you. Hey, how about this? We have four one versus three matchups. Oh. Isn't that strange? That's kind of cool. Yeah. Iowa, LSU, USC, UConn, South Carolina, Oregon State, and Texas, NC State. Very odd. Very odd uh, thing. I wonder if that's ever happened before. But 
Mm -hmm. Well, have a good evening, everyone. Everyone take the high road, especially with it being Easter. So make okay, sure you guys take the high road. We'll talk to you Monday night after Iowa LSU. Big game. Tune in Monday, 6 p.m. Central Time on ESPN. We'll talk to you then.